Hello once again, welcome to the PokerStars Arena hosting the weekly Sunday Million. This week, 9,738 entries, prize pool of $1 million as per the guarantee. And after one day of play, 74 remain. That's right, 74 players coming back for day two, playing down to a winner tonight with 54.5K plus bounties up for grabs for this week's champion. Hello everyone, it's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton and Griffin Benger. Peace. How are we doing, Griffin? Very well, very well. How's everyone doing? Uh, I suggest we get straight to the action and get to our first feature table because action is underway on day two of the Sunday Million. In fact, after one hand, we're already down to 73. Player gone on the first hand of the day. And here at the feature table, we have the day to chip leader that is chamothers from the uk who has ah. gone to the flop against <laughs> off cubert who has top pair chamothers i can't believe we schlugged somebody already yeah, and bear in mind that for the time being, we will follow our feature table, so there'll be plenty of schlugging because we will not see the KOs at the outer <laughs> tables. Nice little open here under the gun with the 9-8 suited. You love to see it. It's one of those hands that really the bottom of your not high value range kind of hands you want to open to balance those big hands in early position. So nice to get, you know, seven-handed. You kind of see if you can get it through. Might have trouble with the chip leader, though. Can you explain a little bit, 
Griffin about why you might open 9-8 suited but fold Queen Jack offsuit under the gun? Yeah, because, you know, a lot of the time, the kind of hands <clears throat> that are going to continue against you that are most often times going to have positions since you're raising under the gun are going to be a lot of hands like, you know, King Queen, uh, King Jack suited, those type of hands. Not a lot of 8x, 9x hands are really going to be calling you. Um, you'll be kind of disguised with that 9-8 suited in early position. You know, you're going to be able to rep a really strong range on, on certain boards. I mean, you know, if someone just calls with Ace Jack and it comes King Jack high with two spades and you bet twice, they might be folding that mid pair, for instance. So uh, there's a lot of maneuverability with a hand like that. Uh, and you know what? Oftentimes we saw there the chip leader, you know, taking that spot with the, the 4x three bet for, with Ace 10. You know, it's not always going to be the chip leader in the small blind with that kind of hand. And they're going to fold Ace 10 a lot of the time. And you're folding out a lot of better hands, raising early position there. And is there any re raise size in which you can justify? peeling with nine eight suited like if it's just a min click back are you just always folding no you're gonna want to be calling those three bets in that spot pretty much you know with that 40 big blind stack probably up to you know three three point two x but it was it was just a bit over that almost four x okay. so i think that's what where the, the fold comes in also it's it's a very strong range to three bet from the small blind you know against under the gun there so it right I, th I think that Samuel's probably expecting the hand to be really strong there and not wanting to have play a guessing game, you know, this early at the, at the, um, you know, restart a set here though, for Samuel, which is quite That's nice. Pretty wild. Yeah. Interestingly, queen 10 folded the flop. So Samuel way ahead. And again, we see the power of the cat Vitar. <laughs> didn't say anything when he lost the pot but then he wins one quiet <laughs> quiet quiet <laughs> griffin as a cat owner you should be on board with this narrative <laughs> uh by the way we do have a player at the feature table who's watching along at home oh yup and poppin is with us on twitch and with us on the table Love me some yup and poppin'. But yep, yup and poppin'. Yup and poppin' with the with the poppin'. The poppin' and the droppin'. Poppin' until you droppin'. So who's ahead here? Ace King against Ace Eight, and it is a domination situation in Fig Alex's favor. Takes it down on the flop, and we go to the 125,000, 250,000 blind level. And we are playing with a 15-minute clock until the conclusion of this PKO. Decent shove spot here uh, for the cutoff with King Ten. It's close to 15. Uh, big blinds, you're not sort of thrilled shoving here. So makes a tight-ish fold, but <clears throat> it's one of those spots I think you kind of need to shove King Jack, but I think you can justify folding King 10 and would have ran into the Ace Jack of Samuel here. So nice dodge there. Come on, Samuel. Harness the power of that chubby tabby. And get yourself up to 9 million. Average stack right now, 7 million with 69 players remaining. So five eliminations in the first five and a bit minutes of play on day two. I have a question, James. I think you'll have a, an answer for this. How do we so. feel about the the spoiler etiquette of Japan is definitely the high point of his life. I mean, they're basically saying they're still in right 30 minutes from now. <laughs> we'll let that one go. <laughs> I'm going to say the high point was just being featured on stream mentioned. Okay, on stream. So he could, he could, yeah. he could be out. They could and be out, even yeah. if this cheeky monkey doesn't make it beyond this next orbit, it will still be a highlight of their poker career. I mean, it could be an epic collapse or like a really dramatic, you know, bad beat or all in. So, look, if I get to say yup and puppin' like five or six hundred more <laughs> times over the next few hours, it's going to be a highlight of my career, also. 
There it is. <laughs> Feeding the, feed the ego. <laughs> The up and popping playing from Finland this evening. And Chamothers, by the way, may be the table chip leader. Oh, it's just reclaimed. Just reclaimed the chip lead by virtue of THU9 from Sweden losing a pot. J James and Griffin, did you guys ever, for any reason, like have to go into school during the summertime? Like, not. Uh oh, hold on. Yeah, we have Called got. it off. King Deuce all in against King Four, but this is an all club board. This is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. Okay. I don't have high hopes with the internet today. No. Dude, it wasn't bad. <clears throat> wasn't good either. Really, considering the internet. I mean, it was pretty good. We're going to get, look at this, eight, nine, seven. Come on. Anyway, I was about to say this kind of feels like summer school a little bit because the podcast is down. It feels like we're well. You off, keep you keep but saying that, Joe. Anyway, you keep yeah. saying that, but I would remind you that unlike any other year where we've kind of put the podcast on hold, we do actually have a series of summer specials. And I don't want you to tell people that there isn't going to be a podcast this week because there is going to be a podcast this week. There is going to be a podcast this week. There is going to be a podcast this week. Correct. I will make sure people. I I will make sure I amend guys, that. Guys, guys, yup and puppin. Come on, top pair against bottom top, pair. Top and pair, nice puppin. Yuppin. Oh, get the big stack to get it. Oh, oh. I called it. Now oh, we're gonna get a check back. River, rivers ten. Oh, baby what the doll. Heck? Take a yup. Take a pup. Check it down. Manages not to lose too much oh, wait, there. That ten made him made him lose. Yeah. I don't know what beats what anymore. <laughs> I really thought that ten was good. <laughs> Queens and fours win. And now we've got Thera Poker being shoved on short stack in the big blind with ten six off, which, ironically, is ahead. However. Not to know that. Yeah, and this is the power of, you know, shoving into a 10 big blind stack. Going to get a lot of better hands, high card hands to fold. And why we see some players calling off with something as low as, you know, king four, king five, because those kind of hands are being shoved, the suited seven fours and the like. Don't you feel bad, though, when you shove 10 or seven four there and, like, queen eight? suited calls you no not really because uh you know it, first of all not every player is willing slash capable of even making the call with queen eight suit i know we see it a lot especially at the high stage stage but yeah you know at, at something like this with 65 people left you know not every player that plays the one nine sunday million is just going to call off with queen eight high for their tournament life um you know playing for you know almost a hundred thousand dollars by the end of this so um, you're getting fold folds out fold outs from a lot of the population. The times you do get called, you know that's that queen eight of spades against your four seven of diamonds. You're still winning thirty plus percent of the time, and that's that's good enough for for me. You know, as soon as I asked that, I thought that's what you were gonna say, but <laughs> you just like like having me say it. <laughs> Don't want me to be left out. I'm gonna prime Griffin up for some analysis with this one. Give him a softball. Analyze this, Griffin. <laughs> it's probably too a little er, a little too early to start this. So I'm just going to throw the question out there. Yeah. Did anyone else think the last episode of Obi Wan was the last episode of Obi Wan? No, I knew they were no. doing six episodes. Five would be a really weird number of episodes to do. It felt like it should have been. I mean. Oh, I see what you mean. I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil anyone who hasn't seen it and stuff. But I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that. No, I feel like Reva's storyline is still. You know, I think they're going for a whole redemption arc with her, and they're, they're mean, not done doing that. And have, they, have they revealed? I'm assuming this is a one-off, right? This is a this is a one a one-time series. There's not going to be. Multiple I'm pretty seasons. sure. Yeah. Right. So I mean, yeah, I you, hope it is. 
we've got all in here. Threes against Ace Deuce, and threes are holding. Nope. And that no, they're not. <laughs> is a bad beat because it is the double paired board. It's the counterfeit, and that is a double up for Vadro U. Uh, down to 64. That means 10 eliminations in the first 12 minutes. We saw this last week, Joe. We did see a lot of early bust outs. A lot of early bust outs. Things did slow down uh, towards the end as we expected. I don't know what to expect for this one, though, because we're going to have significantly fewer chips in play this week, right? Not significantly. I mean, it's not, not, not a massive difference, to be honest. Besides Joe, you know, uh, I mean, Yoda and Mace Windu haven't shown up yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Oh, that's another movie I watched this weekend. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Oh, yeah. How was that? Pretty bad. Yeah, you should have watched RRR. You watched that instead of, instead of RRR and, and you're bad. Yeah, I do feel that uh, if this is going to be a one-off series, that they do need to resolve a number of storylines before they're done. So it makes sense that there would be another episode, which I assume will be out on Wednesday, and then we can never talk about this ever again, which will make me very happy indeed. Okay, so even though this last episode was, like, better, it still wasn't good, right? Correct. Okay, good. Yup and poppin' all in and takes the blinds and antis. Still playing roughly 50% average. Average stack right now being close to 8 million chips with 63 remaining. The bust outs keep on coming as Fig Alex 25 opens with Queen Jack. However, Chimothers got aces. So they just, there's two players at this table with above average stacks. And a bunch of shorties making poor opens with Queen Jack suited. Call back to your question <clears throat> earlier, Joe. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you want to just take some decent blockers, even though they don't exist, and try to get one through. But when you don't have a lot of chips to work with and you're kind of early-ish position, Queen Jack's not a great candidate. And that was a good example why. Mm. And this is going to be an interesting... Um, spot for fear of poker hard to know you have any fold equity and here it is that you know the 10 big blind shove with seven eight suited is going to force some folds that's why it's so important to find opportunities to be the last one in so to speak but you don't really have that chance when you you just have 10 big blinds you don't get to open shove those deuces oh well we've got fig alex here Open jamming with Ace King. Fear of Poker has sevens. <laughs> Espen has sevens. All the sevens out. See, no matter all what, the sevens coming always seven. coming. <laughs> and it's all into call. And here goes Espen taking that flip. And it's an ace high flop. Seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> that. Griffin, if a seven comes, we're all out of a job. Yeah, yeah, I know. A KO. <laughs> then I'd be a part of history. That's all I really care about. For Fig <laughs> Alex, as we see, Espen eliminated in 61st place. We're down to 60, and now we've got Artisanal Sourdough. Chimothers opening with Ace-5. Vera Poker all in with Ace-King. It's a domination situation. Ooh, Five on the flop. Oh, let's go. Oh, no. And Vera oh, Poker yeah! becomes a victim of the rotation. That is a lion. It does not count as a cat vitar, and That's why we just lost that player. Ooh, I don't know about that. We need to take a poll on that. I think a lion counts as a, as a cat, no? Question, can you have it as a pet? If the answer is no, it doesn't count. Well, isn't that a big, big problem in the U.S. is they have big cats as pets? I watched a documentary. You can't take America as an example of what people should and shouldn't be doing. <laughs> of anything. Let's talk about the rest of the world. Let's talk about, you know, normality. Well, I was going to show you my new baby cheetah, but <laughs> forget it. <laughs> uh, eights and sevens for Vadro. Ooh. Fig Alex with second pair here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's oh. been a brutal day. <clears throat> now, I have a question. Is there an amount that Vadru can bet here that would get just a call from Fig Alex? Because Jack-10 is out there. 
Now, if Audrey bets two million here, I don't know if Fig will want to. Oh, it does just check. <gasps> I love the Joe's observation that it's been a brutal day, and we're literally 17 minutes into the stream. 17 minutes into day two. It's a long I way to go. I cleared my schedule, James. I, you know, I don't want to be done here in two hours. This is ridiculous. Oh, you won't. It'll slow down eventually. And Fig Alex chips up above average or around average as the blinds go to 150,000, 300,000. Seven's got to go. Get up, your mothers. I mean, I know your mothers has got the chip lead, but. 10-6. Okay. Bounty, baby. 10-6 suited. Seven. Are you alive with that backdoor straight flush draw? No. Bing, 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 Can we get a three flush? Griura doubles up to 5 <laughs> Ten, million. 10-6, 7 of diamonds. Uh, Chamothers has dropped down to second place on the leaderboard, by the way. A player called Eva from Brazil is currently in the catbird seat with 23.7 million chips. 55 nice. remaining. There have been only 20 bust outs so far. Nice Wally reference, James. I like it. Well, I don't know whether you know Griffin, but uh, uh, by my side, bit of a my super companion fan. for every stream. Oh, oh, man, that's so cute. Oh, wow, it's really good. It's really nice. Jeez, that's great. That's my little Lego Wally. Did you build it? I did build it. Nerd. Oh, uh, awesome. Flush draw, Fortune Mothers. Fig Alex, currently ahead with Queens. Yeah, and might be playing this as a check raise, just playing 30 big blinds. It's going to work out pretty well. And just a yeah, just a shove, and Jamothers is going to play for it all. And Jamothers gets there with the <laughs> spade on the river, and that is another KO as we lose Fig Alex. And now we are down to 54. There have legitimately been 20 bust-outs since the start of play. In less than 20 minutes of action, Jamothers has reclaimed the number one spot on the leaderboard and is in action again with Queens. Senor Juana. And going for the treb, th treble is off Qbert. Not going to work. Uh, bye bye. Your mother's up over Take a hike. 31 million. Second biggest stack is 25 million. So opening up a decent advantage. I feel like that's the chirp that's that's really gone by the wayside, Joe. Take a hike. I used to love that in the 90s, you know? Someone someone would say that to me. Hey, take a hike. I'll, I'll, I'll drop a take a hike every once in a while. My, my dad says take a hike. Nice. One of our uh, production people has a good one. She says, she says jog on. I like that one. <laughs> That's great. Back when I was working in commercial radio, obviously, any time you put the mic live and had to speak to the audience, the mantra was to keep your thoughts succinct because it's a music station, so don't say too much. And there was a big sign in the studio that said, if you want to take a ramble, take a hike. <laughs> nice. Nice. Fifteen big blinds with the ten jack. Quite a bit too weak to shove, but I, I do I don't mind it as an open to try to just get it through. Uh Jump and Pup in real spot here. Our our friend from the from the chat can't fall to fold. I think I'd probably do the same. So you can pat yourself on the back if you were thinking about that hand there, Juppin. Yeah, Griffin's approval is all he ever wanted in life. <laughs> oh, what a shove by Juppin Puppin. Good job. Good job, Juppin Puppin. 
It's going to like make a little sound of it. ASMR. <laughs> You're doing great, Juppin. I mean, it's the day after Father's Day, at least in uh, America. <laughs> was it Father's Day in North America yesterday, Griff? Yes. Okay. Yes. North North America, I should say. Did you get a, a lot of happy Father's Days since they're all your babies, Joe? Or how does that work? <laughs> you must get a couple. Every year is the same. I pray my phone doesn't ring. <laughs> no, but I mean from the general like viewing public, like our, our, our wonderful streamers, nobody, people that watch the stream. They were too busy talking to their own dads. <laughs> yeah. They're real enough. dads. Yeah. <clears throat> it's Father's Day, not Uncle Daddy Day. Yeah. <laughs> That is a really horrific avatar that Senya Huana has. James, that is a customer. Yeah. I'm going to guess that's not an actual likeness of Senor Huana. I just have this image of that exact person playing behind the screen watching the stream and just being so sad. I... <laughs> Just putting out a cigar. Just, yeah, <laughs> sadly puts a cigar <laughs> in the ashtray. <laughs> he decides he's going to make some changes. After yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the next time we see him on the stream next week, he just has a blank avatar. It's just like, so ashamed. Oh, monkey. Yup and puppin. Never with the King Nine. No. Uh-uh. Nothing good ever. Come happened. on, it's the dog. Ruff, ruff. It's because it needs to be neutered. I really appreciated that I, I saw uh, a winner's photo yesterday. Someone who had a service dog and the winning hand they had was K9. It's great. Oh. Yeah. I can't even forget. I, I forgot to tell you guys this. Mm. Do you want to win something? I took 2% of a friend and he won a bracelet on Friday night. <laughs> no way. You won 2% of a bracelet? What do you get? Yeah. Ooh. One of the links? Yeah. How does that work? Did they cut it off? or? I'll just take the cash. You take the, cash. the bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might uh, be even now in staking people. <laughs> now, I did use that money to buy the link of a, of a bracelet, but that's neither here nor there <laughs> for my collection. It's someone we should get on the podcast eventually, James. It's uh, a guy named Steve Albini, who uh, not only just won his second World Series of Poker Bracelet, but is like an engineer for some of the most iconic albums of all time, like Nirvana's In Utero. Like, he engineered that album. Cool. Wow. I mean, I, I will say the name, I believe you, but the name sounds made up. It's like I have 2% of <laughs> Steve Albini. <laughs> it's a second bracelet. And he it does like, not sound like a guy who wins poker bracelets. For Nirvana. <laughs> he also had 20% of Gary Turnbuckle. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> Gary. Um, so we have dropped below 50 players now, 48 remaining, and we're not even half an hour into the day. This is and there's a, borderline about absurd. about to be another an elimination, or at least uh, someone becoming very short. Just bang, bang, bang. Yeah, we've got Dominguez all in, and Yuppin oh. Puppin calls all in, and we'll Come take on, this race. Coin flip with Ace King against Pocket Fours. Okay, guys. so sad because Yuppin already knows if he's been knocked out. Maybe Diamonds. Oh, so looking good for Yuppin Puppin. Ice. Nope. Oh. We were rooting for you, Yuppin. The Puppin has been neutered, and that will take Four us 11. down to 47 players. Throw up in Puppin. Yeah. Yuppin throw up in. I don't know, one of the two. 
and yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to like move on now, Yepin. So I mean, you know, I know we need all the viewers we can get, but maybe just uh, don't hang around the tournament area. You know, you should probably just <laughs> Griffin. Okay, sorry. <laughs> It's weird when they get bust and they Stay hang out. Stay as the long as you want. We don't need like... the chair. <laughs> Griffin, I know that you're the first person to get very confused by the space time continuum, but I would point out that the moment that Yup and Puppin came into the stream, they were already out of the Sunday million. <laughs> so he's been on the rail for half an hour. Yeah. That's you gotta let it go, Yup. Oh, that would be so weird live. Jax yeah, yeah. versus eight. Six. Jax all in at eight uh, on the turn, and that'll boring. do it for Vadro. Another KO. That's going to take us down to 45 players. We could well see 30 eliminations in the first 30 minutes, a rate of one per minute. And I know we've had some fast-paced day twos of Sunday Millions, but I think that might just be a record if we get there. Yeah, you know, I, I, I do have hockey in five and a half hours. So, you know, there was a close shave the last time I was on here. So I'm not hating this. Don't put that in the universe, Griff. <laughs> yeah, I just, I well just on, Griffin. the poker gods. Way to go. <laughs> Way to guarantee like a midnight finish for everyone. <laughs> but my hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> it's about my brand, James. I don't even play hockey. It's just I'm Canadian, so I want everyone to think I do. <laughs> Griffin, I know that Canadians are like tough, are pretty tough people, but do they change the rules at all when it's people your age or our age playing so you don't get hurt? Yeah, there's no such thing as uh, full contact hockey, basically, uh, for any non, you know, professional hockey, as, as I understand it. Like, even okay. when you're playing any men's league, even at the highest like amateur level, it's it's no, it's non-contact. And when so I say non-contact, I mean non-full contact. Like you, you can't hit people, but you know you can rub up people, rub off people on the. What am I trying to say? You can on like booty rub somebody, but you can't. Yeah, 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 them. yeah. You well, you okay. can like you can even like you know give them shoves in front of the net and stuff, but like you can't, you know, be be the the stuff that they do in the you know the pros. Yeah. Growing up, I mean, we it was when I was growing up, there was sort of full contact, but I don't even know if they do that in high school, just for normal high school anymore, because it's it's bloody dangerous. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you hit a kid from behind, like, and they're eight feet from the boards, you can break their neck. It's, it's scary stuff. We've got Chamother's opening here with Ace-10, and Griura tanking with Queens. All in. Your mother's just like to get a little loosey goosey with the uh, bounties, but five million is a little bit different. Than Should not call here. Probably will, based off what I've seen from your mother's. Yeah. Oh, but uh, thinking about it, only two hundred sixty-five for the bounty. I think you're gonna find a fold. No, I was wrong. There's the call. Can we cut the second thing I said? And the first no one ace. Is expert stuff. Griura doubles up, and after that, Chamothers is still in the number one position on the leaderboard, 26.7 million, and has ace five suited here. So we didn't quite do it, guys. We got 29 eliminations in the first 30 minutes, not quite one per minute. We didn't get the perfect math that we wanted. This day's been ruined. Yeah, has. God damn it. How do they know? How do they know they're up against King 10? Sometimes, Joe, you just know. Oh, aces now for Chamothers. Soda Pops. And it's a blind v. blind situation. Raises small to big. Gets the call from Jack 8. And it's an 8 high flop. Ooh. And off Cuba is in trouble. And even in more trouble now that Chamothers is playing this. Chamothers. Chamothers is playing this as a check raise um, because... Off Qbert, 
you know, you can't really be folding here. And that is the worst card for your hands. Um, based off everything you've seen from Chamothas too, it's like, how do you, how do you just fold here? But you have such an edge on the rest of the table. I think in flow in the moment, it's going to be near impossible for Cubert to fold, but it, you know, from the booth here, it looks like it's just, well, cause we can see the aces, but just also just because of the way the table is, it'd be nice to find a fold here. You just hate to get coolered. Hell yeah. Woo! Blind nice on blind, blind guys. Not easy to do. Pretty blind nice. Are now up to 175,000, 350,000. Chimothers closing in on the 30 million mark once again. I will say, though, Chimothers did manage, as much as I liked the, you know, sort of pre-flop and the flop line, really gave an opportunity for Cubert uh, to find a fold by playing it a bit too strong um, on that turn and, and or sorry, pardon me, on the flop and on the turn. By check-raising 5x, you know, Great, you did get the call, but you don't need to go, you know, like full pot there on the turn. You can really yeah. size down. Your, your opponent's pretty much drawing effectively dead a lot of the time when they have an eight. So um, I think a bit of a, of a mistake there. Moving a little too fast is Chimothers over the course of the day. Griura, queen six in the small. And melty face guy in the big blind with queen three. <laughs> <laughs> Senor Juana. Joe Stapleton's future guy with Queen Three. <laughs> Gus Fring asks on Twitch, any Brazilians in the game? What do you think? What do you think? In fact, just as an example, if I look at the top five right now, the players ranked third, fourth, and fifth in chips are all from Brazil. Gus Fring, huh? Speaking of melty face guy. Indeed. Ace five raises the button. And the blinds fold. Yeah, unfortunately, the player who I thought was called Eva is actually called Evan, but it doesn't fit in the lobby. But I've now just seen them at another table, and it's basically Evan with a lot of A's. I, I'm a big Eva. fan of just making it whatever we want it to be. Yeah. In that case, it is Ivan. Uh, we've got Ace-King suited against A6, and this is a pretty solid board for Chamothers. King High still ahead. Yeah, and I would expect some betting here with this massive draw. Quite small, great price actually for a continue from the big. And there is the nut flush for Jamothers. Nutty. Goodness, what a what a day. Your mother's just hitting everything. One point seven five million into a pot of four point six nine million. Just ace high and a fault. Good fault. Down to 41 players now. I think we can wrap this up by lunch. And Cuba with the advantage. 
Zimuzin, of course, has the spade draw. Looks like that check back is going to induce a large overbet from the ten of spades here. Final five tables. Wow, and there's a way they just balanced and we still lost another player. Yeah, Hubert needs to play this as a call if you're going to check back. And I think this would be very weak and it looks like it is going to be a fold. So wow. that's, uh, yeah, that's just goes to show how people often react to those scary overbets. But yeah. yeah, I didn't like that fold. I was impressed by the Jack-8 fold, less impressed by that one. And a good observation, Joe, now that we're balanced, we're meant to be at 40 players. In fact, since the, then there have been two eliminations, so already we're down to 38. Five tables remaining in this week's Sunday Million. Maybe 37, depending on how this flip goes. Oh, yeah. And it will be off Cuba at risk with the ace-king. King high flop, though. And that is going to be a double up, leaving Zimuzin relatively short. Average stack right now, 12.8 million. We're at the 175, 350 blind level. Blinds up in just under 10 minutes time. And another potential race here, deuces versus ace king, maybe? Yeah, it's yeah. Chimothers. It depends if Chimothers wants to play this as a shove for these 20 big blinds. A bit standard sometimes, cut off to big blind, but not, not always. Just going to call. We do not see the all-in, and Deuces can now get away from this. Some real wishful thinking. I feel like you're searching in your mind here for the bet that's going to get you paid, and it's just never going to happen. <laughs> Keep searching. You feel bad no matter what. I, I just want to give a shout out to Exotic Chaotic. Uh, apparently, they've Rewatched One Piece four times with different friends, which has over a thousand episodes. So the fact you found time to watch our stream when you commit that kind of time to anime, <laughs> you nerd! Wow. Thanks for stopping in. Um, I was also going to shout out Audio 3 whose message I've read five times now and still can't work out what they're insinuating. If you are afraid of stream being too short, Joe, just call Hinamke and tell Tem you'll be by to pick up some pounds. <laughs> Ace, queen versus sixes. Doesn't go all in pre. Maybe, maybe it's now going to start slowing down. Six is still with the advantage, and six is good by the river. Yeah, I'd like to see a little bet here, and there is one. Chamothers. So we get the call from Chamothers. Tell your children not to flap this way. <laughs> well, uh, Chamothers, Chamothers has dropped down to third place on the leaderboard now. Uh, Asaf Me from Canada is second in chips, and Yeka7 from Ukraine is the current tourney boss with close to 30 million. What I love is that RDO3 has tried to provide clarification, and I still don't understand. <laughs> Lol, call the bank and tell them you will be by to pick up some pounds. Uh, 
Okay, so what are you trying Griffin. to say? Griffin, just RTO three. Just <laughs> abandon, abandon. Abort. I mean, look, I, I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know who knows what the business code for something. What's the bank gonna tell me? <laughs> Uh, okay, this could be the type of pot that everyone loves. Yep. Check, check. It is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone, everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. Okay. Yeah. Oof. Terrible. These are fair reviews. These are absolutely <clears throat> fair reviews. Are there any notes or just, no, we're just going to get crapped on? But it's really, really hard. Normally I can sync with both of you, but now I have to pick a side and I don't know who to pick. No, Last I time like I kind of picked Griffin and the reason. this time I tried to pick Joe. Griffin is definitely quicker than Joe. That's, that is 100%. That's what she said. <laughs> You see, Tom, is Griffin early or is Joe late? There's, there's two ways of looking at it. Well, this time, a pair of eights is good. We have dropped down to 36, by the way. Ooh. Ooh. A piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Piece of candy. And a bet of 1.225 million. And good fold. Fold from Andre. So Trish on YouTube says, hey, Joe, can you say hi to my daughter, Leah, who's a first time viewer with me tonight? So uh, what's something like, James, what do you think that would be like? Like, hey, Leah, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Glad to ha something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of that's the kind of the biz that they're looking for. Uh, no, I, I don't do that. Sorry. Thanks, Trish. Oh. King Queen opens, Queen Jack flats. This is gonna be this is gonna be a textbook Queen Jack hand. Don't do it. Don't play this hand ever for any reason. <laughs> it's not a good play out of this spot at all. Is that one of your post-it notes, Joe? Never play Queen Jack. I don't need a post-it note for that. It's like tattooed to my brain. I don't know. You've been bringing it up a lot today. It's like you need us to verify. You're like, what do you, uh, I know we see the 9-8 suited, but what do you think about Queen Jack here? <laughs> just been Can you just reiterate that Queen Jack should not be played for any reason lately. at any time? <laughs> what about if the river's a 10, Joe? Will you then change your tune? The river will not be a 10. Okay. Oh, of course, because... Andre's got a 10, right? And so blockers. Mm -hmm. We'll never know. Down to 34 now. We're two eliminations away from being down to the final four tables. Ooh. Gonna get through Chamada. And that four on nope. the flop Lights pretty out. much seals the deal. And that is going to be the KO of Zamuzin in 33rd place. That means this table breaks because we are down to 32. Switching. <laughs> this is so sick. Hey, Joe, what comes after Father's Day? It's your Mother's Day. It's your Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and you will observe that your Mother's has been moved to this table alongside Evan, also joined by... Senor Juana. Eat 
Y va... So James, as a, as a Pixar, as a Disney Pixar stan, will you be, will be taking the, uh, the family to see Lightyear? No, I will not. And it seems very few people did based on its opening weekend box office. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, the reviews I've seen have been pretty harsh. That okay. Griffin sent me a video that had me dying, oh. just completely shredding <laughs> light year. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you, uh, uh, James. Although I will say I've sent that to a couple people, Joe, and 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 they're just like, there was no sound. I'm like, Ugh, like you don't get the meme format. It's just you don't. There's no sound. It is odd that they chose to do it with video instead of like still frames, which most I oh think my means... oh wow yeah you're right. There's a little video. There's a little sound button. Okay, that's very confusing. I'm not gonna send this. <laughs> the 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 gist of the video, James, is about how the conceit of the movie is so confusing that even Chris Evans got it wrong. Oh wow. My understanding is that this is meant to be a film within a film, right? This is meant to be the film of the story of Buzz Lightyear that inspired the toy line. So this is a yes. film that exists within the Toy Story universe. Yes. Okay. Which in and of itself is a really, really up its own concept. Does yeah. that mean that there's still a real guy that the film within the film is based on and we might get his... I don't think also. so. No. Okay, I'm going to send you this thing anyway, uh, but but don't <laughs> expect there to be sa sound, okay, James? No, but I, I think you'll appreciate it. I, I'm going to assume that Buzz Lightyear and Emperor Zerg are not real people that they based okay. a film on that then led to some toys. Because I wasn't Chris Evans saying Buzz Lightyear was a real guy? I think so, yeah. Like, yeah. he was confused. <laughs> this is Chris Evans, the actor, right? Not Chris Evans, the DJ. Correct, yes. I mean, the DJ may also have been confused. I don't know. There's been an elimination from one of the other tables, and we're down to 31 players already. A reminder that we started uh, less than an hour ago, 50 minutes to be precise, with 74. Wait, and so 43 of them are no longer in this tournament. So if the toy Buzz Lightyear is based on a movie in the Toy Story universe, called, then why does he have a different voice than Tim Allen? <laughs> like, he should. It made sense if, like, Chris Evans oh, was playing yeah. like a, a real guy. But, like, yeah. But if the guy voicing or playing the character in the movie was an actor of, like, Chris Evans' stature, maybe the toy company wanted to do it on the cheap and didn't want to pay for his voice, so they got a random voiceover person to be the voice of the Buzz Lightyear toy. Okay, yeah, but is that the excuse that Disney wants to use for, Dude, like, I can't you know, believe like we're even discussing A this. knockoff thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, like when they had the Ghostbusters cartoon, they didn't get Bill Murray. They got a guy that sounded kind of like Bill Murray. Yeah. I have to say, I would be... I'd much rather watch a marathon of Woody's Roundup, the black and white TV series, than watch the Lightyear movie. You know what? I heard that that, might, that was, I think, intended to be maybe the next thing, but maybe after the lack of success of this opening weekend, not so much. I promise you they don't replace Tom Hanks. I've Look, I know, Joe, that you're not as big on animated movies and you're not as much of a Pixar fanboy as I am. I think that Toy Story is on a perfect movie trilogy. I can even be on board with the short specials they did around Halloween and Christmas. Toy Story 4 was terrible and was a stain on the series. And Ooh. this sounds like they've taken it to a whole new level. It's just leave it alone. Move on. There are some really talented people at Pixar who have some amazing ideas and create really strong original stories. Stop going back to the Toy Story well. Just let it go. Move, uh, create something new. But they're toys that are alive, James. Come on. And they made three very good films about that concept, Griffin. Now they can move on. Three? Oh, someone didn't like Toy Story 2. No, he just said Toy Story I said they 4. Made he didn't three like. good films, Griffin. One, two, and three. <laughs> four was really good. It had John Wick in it. 
Did you just say four was really good? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We seem to have a, uh, one a with technical Neo? problem. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we've lost Griffin Benja. Um, we'll do everything we can to get Griffin back on stream as soon that as possible. That photo was taken before Toy Story 4 came out. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I thought one of the wasn't things I like really well re well received. One of the things I like about Griffin is that he likes almost everything. That's <laughs> not true, Joe. He's such a sweetie. That is not true, but uh, if you feel that way, I mean, you know how much I like you. It's fine. I mean, you might as well just come out and say <laughs> Griffin's a simpleton. I mean, that's literally what you were insinuating. He just likes likes lights and noises. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Colors. Yeah. <laughs> I did bring up uh, the Buzz Lightyear movie because I just wanted to go to it with you guys. Like <laughs> Griffin thought the Sex and the City <laughs> slot machine was down. the fourth best TV show he saw this year. <laughs> so shiny. Is there still poker? There is still poker. We still have 29 players. I mean, we have a fraction okay. of the field that we started the day with. I've never, ever seen us cut through players at the speed that we have today. This is, mm -hmm. we're in uncharted waters, quite frankly. I got to love the fact that a player calls himself Kamikaze. He's just firing five high into two opponents. That's pretty cool. That was cool. <laughs> the Goslow in the chat says, let's not get started on Kenobi. Actually, we already... We already took that right into the ground about Dirty an hour finish, ago. Kenobi. Yeah, we, we did that already. Been there, seen it, done it, pal. Yeah. Yeah, hit the sh take a hike. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, Griffin, we were covering works of Victorian literature. Oh, yeah? Classy. Hmm. So a pair of threes is good here for Chamothers, who still sits inside the top five, but is not the chip leader right now. Finished the, the offer yesterday. What a cool oh. TV series. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start that tonight. That's great. What it was, What is it on? Uh, looks Paramount like Plus. we have yeah. hit the first break of the day. And I have to say, guys, that was a pretty dramatic, pretty action-packed first session. 55 minutes of play that has got us down from 74 to 29. We've got four tables remaining as we play down to a winner tonight. And it is Yeka7 from Ukraine who currently leads with a stack of 36.4 million. Back to the action in this week's Sunday Million inside of five minutes. Uh, something I want to clarify is something we were talking about during that last session, referencing the fact that officially the podcast is on summer break. We're not recording new episodes, but when we finished the season, I know you always like to say, Joe, that we have our season finale in June. Uh, we Correct. did record some extra episodes. We've got what we call some summer specials coming your way. And the first of those shows is going to drop on Friday. I was going to save it for next week, and then I suddenly realized I'm on holiday. And to be brutally honest, I don't really fancy logging into network systems from my vacation and uploading a podcast. So you're going to get it seven days early, you lucky people. So that means this Friday, you're going to get to hear uh, a feature-length interview with someone who works at Poker Stars. And there are two things we don't normally do on the Poker in the Ears podcast. The first is talk to people inside the Poker Stars organization. And the other thing we don't normally do is tackle serious or meaty subjects. Occasionally we do, but it's rare. This week we are covering the controversial subject of cheating in poker. And we have got an in-depth interview with Francis Lincoln, who is the head of game integrity at Poker Stars. And Game Integrity, this is the team that polices our online tables, that keeps the games fair, that stops people from violating the terms of service, that stops people from breaking the rules and effectively defrauding other players of their money. Um, Joe, I know that I had to do the interview at a time that you weren't around, but you had a chance to listen to it. I think we covered most subjects in this area. 
Yeah, of course. And you're very clear at the top. We'll make it more clear now. You can't give away the whole keys to the kingdom when you do an interview like this. There's some proprietary stuff uh, that, you know, Francis isn't allowed to say questions. We know that, that will put Francis in an awkward spot. Um, yes, it's hilarious, guys. We did something serious. They were like, nope, we don't need stamps for this one. But <laughs> it is relatively fascinating. It's the kind of stuff that I, I'm actually people are very, very. Well, I, I guess justifiably concerned over this stuff as a as a online poker player myself. I just trust that the sites are just going to do what they can. And it is what it is. I don't really get too worked up about that stuff. And I think there's probably a lot of recreational players like me. But if you're not that sort of player, if you are the sort of player that is curious about how some of this stuff works, it's a pretty frank discussion and pretty interesting. Even me, someone who like does not really care what they do behind the scenes. I was pretty gripped for the whole, what is it, 25 minutes or so? Yeah, it's about 25 minutes to half an hour. So that episode will drop on Friday, and I love this uh, from Jed, uh, who thinks that they should be called the Cheetah Beta Bureau. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> PokerStars Place is one of the names that got floated at one stage. But I think it is interesting stuff, and I think I, it's very easy to dismiss people who have concerns, right, about whether the shuffle is fair, whether the river cards are rigged, or whether everyone they're playing against is real, or whether they're actually uh, an automated program. And we get into some of that stuff. I should point out the stuff like the, the shuffle and the, the fairness of the deal is a different department. And maybe we can cover that down the line with a different department at Stars, because we obviously want to address concerns that people may have about playing online poker and prove that a lot of the conspiracy theories are total nonsense. But yeah, it's, uh, I hope that you find it an interesting conversation. I think it's good to lift the curtain and maybe this is the start of a series in the sense that we're inviting people to send in questions. If there's anything we don't cover in this interview that you want to know, we're inviting you to use our Discord server to put questions to Francis that we can ask on a future episode. But maybe we kind of work our way through different departments at Stars and look at some of the other teams and the work that they do uh, to make the site what it is. So if you have any specific suggestions, if there's something you've always wanted to know, if there's a particular thing behind the scenes that you would like explored, let us know and maybe, just maybe, uh, we can make it happen because, yeah, I think when you live it 24-7 or at least kind of, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, you take it for granted and then you remember that actually a lot of the people who we talk to, a lot of the players, a lot of the podcast listeners, a lot of poker fans don't know this stuff. So maybe it's worth exploring. So maybe we will do more episodes like this down the line. But yes, just to clarify, even though we're on summer break, the first of our summer specials is going to drop this Friday. New Poker in the Ears, episode 250 for your listening pleasure. Uh, Joseph, you have earned yourself a break, uh, but Griffin and I are going to stick around as we get back to the action in this week's Sunday Million. Uh, returning to our feature table, cards in the air once again. Blind still 200,000, 400,000, 29 players remaining. 29. You didn't think we'd be saying that number after starting the day with almost three times as many. Nice little fair fight to start the post break. Ivan with the 10 7 suited. Six is for <laughs> Yope. Uh, Leto asking about where that interview will live. Not on YouTube because the podcast is an audio show, Leto, but chances are whichever podcast platform you use or whatever app you have on your device of choice, it will be there. So that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, Amazon Music. If all else fails, pokerstars.com slash podcast. So. It would be nice, I think, for Yope to go for a little bet here on the river. He would hate to lose to a dry 8 or 10. Well, That's exactly what's going to happen. Do lose to a 10. Now, let me just work this out. 
Average stack right now is just over 16 million. Blinds are 200,000, 400,000. So what are we looking at? 40 big blind average, Griffin? Nailed it. And that is slightly higher than yes. we would expect to play in the Sunday Million. Normally we track around a 30 big blind average. So that speaks to how quickly the action has gone today and how many eliminations we've seen during the first hour of play. We might see things slow down. Although, I do find that every time, every time we say that, it, it, it then doesn't slow down. <laughs> No, I think uh, I think you hit it right on the head there, James. 40 big blinds, too significant of an average for things to continue at the pace it was. There was a yeah. lot of sort of short stacks, and it felt like the short stacks were rarely doubling up, at least at the, the tables that we were featuring. Leto also asking about the new structure. So, yeah, new starting stack, different blind levels, playing 8 max instead of 9 max. I think there's been some tweaks to the duration of blind levels on day one. Um, again, designed to put play in the right places and ensure that play doesn't finish too late on day one. The single biggest change, obviously, is that the Sunday Million is now progressive knockout format. And the second biggest change is the move to eight max from nine handed. So it's really kind of a part of the plan here when you raise under the gun with a hand like King Jack, when you see about this ace high board, you want to pick up a spade on the turn to sort of help you feel comfortable continuing the story you're going to tell. You've yeah. talked a lot about the sort of early position range is going to be able to more credibly rep these ace high boards and also credibly wrap a bigger ace than what might be calling it the, the button. But we can see Evan here with really the top of, of their range with the ace queen would not be folding this turn. And you see it played as a check here. Whatever. Renan, you know, probably weighing what hands am I really even getting to fold if I bet the turn here and ace is probably not going to fold. And do you want to chase the spade for 2.9 million? Yeah, pretty stiff bet. I think I would probably not be thrilled about calling 3 million here. You could also be up against a 9 sometimes. 3's full, you're drawing dead against. Very disciplined fold, I think, there from Renan. Sini Kwa Non just joined. How many players remain? I'll do it with this hand. That's just easy. The answer is 29. Freeway to the and because, Yeah, and because of that, um, you know, larger than usual average stack, we're actually going to see some more sort of flatting from some hands like these sixes pre-flop. So going to have, I think, some more interesting post-flop spots as opposed to all of these all-in confrontations. I mean, that first table we were covering, James, was two big stacks and then a bunch of I know. 10, 15 big blinds ones. Now we have, you know, 12, 23, 13, 15, 25. So a lot of play to look forward to. Um, New chip leader and... Just looking in the lobby, Griffin, occasionally you'll see a flag that you don't instantly recognize. And this is one of those. Plan Trap from Armenia currently has the biggest stack with 29 players remaining. Meanwhile, nuts. That is indeed the nuts on the turn for Kamikaze. And Vila does not get there on the river. Uh, Hectic Mulk is not still in. We were hoping to check in on the Mulk at some point today. However, I think Hectic Mulk was one of the players who went out in the first 15 minutes. Did come into day two with a 15 big blind stack. The Sunday Million reg not going any further this week. Hey, 
And we see some pause here um, from Villa. And I think that has way more to do with the idea of representing uh, flush with that king of diamonds in the hand than it is of making some sort of call with king high and not really beating anything. Okay, blinds up to 250,000, 500,000. So now we're back to around or just over a 30 big blind average. So maybe we now see a little bit of movement during the next 15 minutes. Senor Juana opening with King Nine. Here's a question from the G-Man, Griffin. Does 8-max really make any difference? I thought under the gun and under the gun plus one ranges should basically be the same. It's an interesting question because I know that poker players much prefer to play eight-handed live, but I got the impression that was more to do about personal space. Does it make a significant difference, nine-handed versus eight-handed? In my experience, the personal space live thing has way more to do uh, with like ten to nine handed. Okay. Because ten handed is unbearable. Like you're knee to knee usually. Um, I definitely, I th the, yeah, there, I think there's a significant difference between nine handed and eight handed. You know, sometimes someone gets eliminated and they don't balance the table right away. Suddenly you're seven handed. Um, you know, it's, it's it's one person folds under the gun and you're playing six max, which is just really benefits um, sort of you know, a really strong post-flop play, being really aggressive. It's just, it's just, it's just more like uh, fluid. You know, it's not just a bunch of coolers all the time and having to, you know, you can sort of open up your ranges a little more. You, you know, if you have a big stack, you can be running, you know, over 50% VI, like playing 50% of hands because you have maybe a tight table or guys right. that are folding a lot. You can open something like King Six suited at the at the you know hijack and you just just get more involved so it's just it's just more fun to play i think uh meanwhile i did predict we'd see something happen this level and sure enough we just had the double up of rena rocks won a race against kamikaze meanwhile there have been two ko's from the outer table so down to 27 players right now plan trap still the biggest stack with 41.7 million and there is a player called omos chan who is the single biggest bounty available right now Amos is worth $1,700, which means that Amos has won nearly 3400 in head prizes so far. So would that make Wally -E your favorite Disney Pixar, James? Yes, I think it probably is. The more you know. Should I bring Wally back onto the stream? Uh, <laughs> come here. I'm always paranoid about dropping Lego Wally because I, it did happen once. Wally fell off a shelf. And the problem that is you can't just kind of like add the bits back on. You basically have to deconstruct the whole damn thing and start from scratch. No way. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, he does have... Is it in here? There's a little plant pot. Look, there's a little plant inside. Oh, my gosh. How long did it take for you to uh, put it together? I mean, with breaks, about half a day. Oh, the bug! There is the, the the there is a little cockroach on him as well. Oh, really? So tens versus king nine here, and a two barrel that I think is actually going to be pretty effective if you look at the positions here. This was an under-the-gun spot for Kamikaze and a really under-repped monster pocket tens in the big blind that you can't really play as a, you know, three-bet from this seat, uh, this deep stacked. Um, and with two barrels coming there, very hard to continue, you know, without an ace. So many aces in Kamikaze's range. And now two queens at the hijack. Yeah. For Chimothers. Your mother's just calls and gets a 
relatively safe flop. Just the wheel draw for Evan. Yeah, I mean, you can certainly justify putting in another bet here and being willing to get the chips in for 50, 40 big, 40 plus big blinds. But it's kind of cool sometimes to mix in some flats here. Keep those bluffs in. Check raise from Chimothers. Two million becomes yeah. six million. And the gig's up, Evan. And that is going to put your mothers up to 36 million, back into third place on the leaderboard. By the way, Griffin, if I'm going to point out some of the pop culture icons that exist on my desk inside the PokerStars Arena, I should also highlight that Superman's still here. This was a gift from Griffin Benja seven years ago. And Superman <laughs> still stands guard on my desk. Love it. Now if they could just now if WB could just do something with the character, that'd be nice. Ew, someone said ten out of ten, Henry Cavill. And spelled Henry Cavill wrong. That was not Henry Cavill. Could run a little competition here, albeit with no prize. I have Wally, I have Superman. There is one other character from pop culture who exists on my desk in the PokerStars arena. And it is a character from the Star Wars universe, but it's so obscure that I'm pretty certain no one will get it. Hmm... <laughs> oh, bless you. Ah, thank you. Actually, that was my guess at the character name. <laughs> okay, okay. Guys, Boba Fett, Chewbacca, and Jabba the Hutt are not obscure by any okay, stretch okay. of the imagination. Princess Leia. <sighs> Child Princess Leia. Ooh. Okay, I got one. Uh, Owen. <laughs> no. I would probably have to give a clue. In Charred Owen. I have to say, Joshua is closest in the sense that I'm talking about someone here who is not part of the movies, the TV shows. In fact, I don't think this character is considered to be canon. I think this Admiral character... Admiral Thrawn. Thrawn is now canon because Thrawn was in Star Wars Rebels. Right. But How you're definitely, definitely close now. Cool. You're very close now. Oh, is it uh, Luke Skywalker's girlfriend in the books? Griffin's got it. Oh, nice. What's her name again? Lara what? or something? That's the thing. Griffin hasn't got the name, though. Still a chance oh. for someone else to win. Corin Horn? That sounds made up. <laughs> That's what someone said. That wasn't me. There we go. Wow, well done. So you were... Taco oh, Mary Man. Jade. The last so one. You were, a, you were a deep Star Wars nerd. There we you go. Like... There is There is Mara Jade. You're like Star Wars Legends kind of. Oh, kind of Griffin, nerd. you think you're a huge nerd. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's nerdy, man. <laughs> that's great. What, 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 what did you like about Mira Jade, James? I think she's an absolutely awesome character, and the fact that George Lucas hated her makes me smile. Uh, also, I think it's very clear that Mara Jade was a huge inspiration when Dave Filoni created Ahsoka Tano. Mm. Because bear in mind, okay, that the Timothy Zahn books came before any of the prequels and any of the Disney stuff. And with the exception of Princess Leia, there weren't really any strong female characters in Star Wars. And Mara Jade was... A kick-ass character with a great mm. background and a great story arc.
was she the was she the 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 granddaughter of Emperor, Emperor Palpatine? No, she was not the granddaughter. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh Disney! Uh, oh Disney! <laughs> so dumb! Uh, so dumb! And pressure being put on here against Ivan. And tough to continue with top pair with an, when an eight makes a straight. And you're losing to some other value hands like kings and aces, even pocket queens, which could bet the turn. But you are repping a pretty thin range, are you, as Kamikaze? But Kamikaze has to recognize Evan's going to have some hands like King Jack. You, you block, you know, you block the straight with the queen in your hand and it just goes for it and takes it down. So two really nice bluffs in a row for Kamikaze. And that's how you do it with 27 left of the Sunday billion. Ninja Kiku, I don't understand your comment. I was talking about the early 1990s and saying that at that point in time, there were no characters. I even specifically said that one of the reasons why I like Mara Jade is because she was clearly a huge influence when Dave Filoni created Ahsoka Tano, but one came before Tother. Tother! Tother! That was sick. We have got a pair of aces against a pair of aces against a pair of kings, and Evan has kicker problems. Hey, what's your problem, man? It's my kicker! And your mother's is drawing here to the flush, but this is going to result in a chop between your mother's and Evan. And I know what they say. You know what they say. Should be easy with just two. So Griffin, this is a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, chop pot. pot. Oh dear, I, sorry, I kind of like bottled that. I Who's should that? have just waited. I needed to wait half a second longer for you. Who's I... that, James? We're never going to be ready for regionals. If it's like that on a Daytona, we're screwed. Daytona. <laughs> El, El Rabito asked what the hell are regionals. <laughs> it's the thing that they're always training for and bring it on and all the other movies of na that nature. Don't forget the Netflix documentary series, Cheer, Griffin. Yeah, yeah. I think I watched some of that at some point. As I've said before, you will not find a documentary series which has such a harsh tonal shift between its first season and its second season. Not in a bad really, way. Yeah. There was a really bad scandal, though, I think, that really turned me off from the show. That's what Those season two characters. is about, Griffin. That's why I talk okay. about the tonal shift. So season one is all fun and joy and inspiration. Oh, okay. Season two is utterly depressing. Mm. I was almost convinced to finally start watching F1 Drive to Survive um, this past weekend, but then yeah. I didn't. So people say really good things about it. Um, I really, you know, such a long list of stuff to watch, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm so I'm I'm overwhelmed, and I have a lot of free time, and I still can't even, can't keep up. That is I true, Griffin. Watch. You you clearly have a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah. So try to survive is a bit low on the list. So, so I got to watch Better Call Saul and Barry and uh, The Offer apparently, and I still have to finish Stranger Things and 
winning time, Tokyo Vice. It's just out of control. So much good content. Yeah, the only way I can get Tokyo Vice in the UK is if I take out a Stars Play subscription via Amazon Prime. Well, that ain't happening. Famous last words, James. <laughs> Senor Juana is all in with Ace King, and Renan Rocks is likely to give him a spin. We are flipping here. Senor Juana, the player at risk. Ooh! And makes the oh. flush on the turn. Senor Juana gets the double up. We are down to 26, though. We've seen an elimination from one of the outer tables, so we're two away from being at the final three tables of this week's Sunday Million. Blinds just went up to 300,000, 600,000. We are back to a 30 big blind average. So Sid Hoffman said, for a split second, I thought you were going to say you needed to watch The Office. And I was going to have words with you, Griff. Well, I have some words with you, Sid Hoffman. I've only watched about half of The Office, and I think it's mid. Which office are you talking about? I'm talking about the U.S. office. I think right. it is pretty average. has some high points, but it's not... I, I never got into it. And recently, great. though, I did try re-watching the original, like the U.K. series, and it's not dated particularly well. It's actually quite tough That's watch. That's interesting. I've, won I've wondered that. I've wondered how that would hold up, the uh, U.K. one. I don't really think you necessarily should judge shows too harshly for being of their time. I, I, I'm inclined to agree with that, but it, it, that doesn't change the fact that, like, you are enjoying it. Le like, it's still leaking into your, to how much you're enjoying it. You know what I mean? It's like. Oh, wow. Did you just see that? We what, just rebalanced. We're down to 24 already. We just had two eliminations from the other tables, and we're down to three. Wow. Uh, we have got a set of nines here. Yeah, and Evan going to get punished for even calling preflop by losing this pot. That's right, Tom. Less than 90 minutes of play and already down to three players. That means 50 eliminations in an hour and a half. And a potential collision here. Nines versus tens. Could be a double up for Bajan. King six opens. A six flat. What? Yeah, great shove spot here for Evan after that horrible call with the queen five. And going to be punished by the big blinds tens. Now, the question is... Any chance Bayesian is one of those nits that is going to fold here because there's a raise and a call and a shove. And we Don't are... be that guy. On a money Poor jump, girl. Griffin. Griffin, oh. we are on a money jump. $856 is the current payout. But oh, God. if you can lie. ladder up to 23rd, it's $1,200. Oh, it's just, it's just. You know how hard it is to get pocket tens for like. Eight big blinds, whatever you have. Bajan wants the extra 350 bucks. Yeah, we did talk earlier about how that hypothetical of the queen eight suited, four seven suited, talking about how players will have the range of making big faults, and you just saw it right there. Yeah. Well, this is a case of domination rotation. Senor Juana flopping top pair. Juana. Very ambitious call with the sixes with a player behind. I don't like to see it. Um, and you know what? That is, I would say, one of 
two cards that we could expect to see Kamikaze bet again with just the king high. You know, maybe a queen or this ace is going to be one where you can really attack against Jack X hands. I just love problem the is it is a club, and that gives Senior Face Melter the flush draw along with that mid pair. So we won't, don't expect a fold. I but we've seen some really great bluffs. Go ahead. Love the understatement of optimistic Cole Griffin. <laughs> If you're interested in knowing fold. what's happening at wow. the top of the leaderboard right now, we still have Plan Trap from Armenia in the number one position with 45 million. Asaf Me from Canada, second in chips with 41.6 million. Chamothers is still in the top five, as is Kamikaze. Ooh, big, big trouble uh, for Yope, or Yope here. So underrepped is the king-queen from the big blind. You're going to be thinking you have the nuts with this king-10. You have the backdoor spades, backdoor straight. That's actually a great card for Yope, because it'll get them, I think, to slow down and also gives you some equity to that nut straight. That's no good. No. So two pair versus two pair, but it is on a four card straight board. Now does Yope get greedy and goes for the value bet? Does. Can't really blame uh, oh my god, then it's not false. What is going on? Uh, worried about the straight. And again, I will highlight the money jump we're on right now. Bajan, by the way, is the shortest stack. Bajan playing from Sweden. He is in the danger zone. Danger zone! I'm regretting that one. I mean, someone must have been prepared to play hands to get us down to 24 this quickly. Now we're seeing the action tighten up a little bit. Yeah, I don't mind this playing as a three bet from Senior Hana here, but it's going to be tricky because with that price, Chamothers is going to continue a lot of the time, especially with that bounty equity, and we already see... You know, Chamothers is not just never folding this flop, but might weirdly play it as a check race based off kind of the way we've seen Chamothers play certain situations. And a bet of 2.4 million from Senor Juana. Quickly called by oh. Chamothers, who turns the full house. And if Senor was prepared to fold that mid pair and flush draw i don't think it's gonna fire another bullet in this board and folds the river yeah your mother's up over 40 million third in chips right now 23 players remaining so bajan you've made the money jump you can now gamble villa is also a short stack And a walk for Yope. James, do you know if you have RRR there in uh, UK Netflix? Have a look for me. Do I have I think what? you'll. Okay, so there's this Indian action adventure movie that just came out called rrr just like the, the talk of the movie world just so those three R -R -R, letters those three letters rrr and i watched it I, I heard so much buzz about it i was a guy i follow on twitter i went oh, to high school Ooh. that is bajan elimination gone but 
I know some people will be saying, should have taken that spot with 10s earlier on, but in Bajan's mind, they got the money jump. Bajan cashing out for 350 bucks more than they would have otherwise. Plus, go. of course, the bounties they won. So that's $1,200 plus $795 in bounties. Hold on, Griffin, hold on. I don't want to be too distracted, so keep an eye on what's happening here. Got a full house for Senor Juana, 99.6% equity. Yeah, apparently uh, this is a thing, calling with the Queen-5 from the big blind. I don't know if the ranges have changed lately, but we've seen all these silly folds and then these Queen-5 calls from the big blind. Actually, Chima, there's not surprise. Calls on the flop with the Queen-5 drawing dead. Okay. Yes, there is a, a Hindi film on Netflix called R R R. It's three hours okay. five minutes long. Yes. So I recommend that you at least give it twenty minutes, and okay. I promise you, you'll you'll, you'll like what you're, you've seen. Okay. I've added it to my list. Good. Where it will now linger with the forty-five linger, other things yes. on my yes, list. Yes. 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 It's an it's an epic. I'll say that an epic epic. It's like everything everywhere all at once meets the departed in pre-independent India. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, you just gotta you just gotta watch it. I'll okay. Just Don't try. say any more. Let me let okay, me okay, discover well, this for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a long flight coming up on Saturday, so maybe it Perfect. can uh, accompany me on my iPad. Yeah. Chamothers up to 40 plus million now. Yeah, Chamothers is now second in chips with 41 million. Plan Trap still the chip leader. The Armenian player has 45.8 million. Four suited opens. I mean, considering some of the laydowns we've seen, Griffin, considering how tight some people are playing, I think Jim Others is right to just wield that big stack right now. Yeah, and with one less player on the table, just playing seven-handed. Yeah. So less likely someone's going to wake up with a big hand and you can just keep opening. Ace Jack is going to flat here. Nine eight comes along for the ride as well. Yeah, kind of a nice sort of spread of holdings here with the fives, mm. nine eight, hearts, no other hearts. You know, pre-flop and then the Ace Jack. And the reason I keep staring at this is that fives officially the best hand right now, but has the least equity. Yeah, not anymore. No. Just well over 50% with the lack of betting. And for, yeah, I was going to say Kamikaze is the one player here that you don't want to have uh, the initiative because very willing to just blast it here with this pot size bet. And this is going to work. This represents a third of Evan's stack. If Evan had taken some initiative and bet the flop, maybe we could have seen a different way this will shake down. Ooh. Does call and rivers the ace. Wow. Rewarded so. by Barry Greenstein. Robe open. Everything flailing everywhere. And now Evan is going to ship this pot. Yeah. You know, Evan really recognizing that this bet is trying to rep what? King seven or something? And is going to take down a very significant pot. Oh, wow. All in. Gets the fold. 
Sid Hoffman asking if, if there is a Greenstein sound effect. Okay, I'll try to do it. Griffin, it's meant kind to be a flame, not the wind. It's more <laughs> than... Okay, let me try again. Please don't. <laughs> Ace, deuce on the button, and the three bet from Kamikaze. Let's see. If the Bay. Rocks. Decides to play this small suited ace in position. Wow, does. Boom. And we are switching as the blinds go up. Because Switch we are going to check on the chip leader, Griffin. We've got Plan Trap in a hand here. Plan Trap with close to 50 million chips right now. But we'll Doesn't have appear to have a plan in this, this hand. hand. Yeah. <laughs> Not a great bluff. Since we got down to 23, once we hit that pay jump, we've lost another two players. 21 remaining right now. Wow, not flush on the river. So yeah, 350,000, 700,000 are the blinds. Asaf Me has been a big stack for most of the day. Still sits in the top five. Has the Grafton, 10-9 suited. And goes to the flop against Thu. Two tens for Thunin. Thunine playing from Sweden. And with the snowman's off, Cuba is in as well. And nom nom. Tens nom nom nom. Good. Very strange bet, but uh, one that's going to work. Indeed. Potato. Brazilian player. Ah, uh, potato, potato. Raise and take it. Boom. AV asking, how much is the bounty for the winner? To be determined. King on the turn. And it's the king of clubs. Action card, as we call it in the biz, the business. And now the ace high flush for Thu. And I certainly hope Thu is going to find a, rain, a raise. Didn't come all this way to make the nut flush just to call, mate. Mm. Brav. Pop it up, brav. By the way, we've got AI Collector who is pretty happy with the avatar selection at this feature table. Got Tony Soprano, we got Willy Wonka, we got the Godfather. Oh, we got the dinosaur from Toy Story. We were talking about that earlier on. Not the T Rex, the other one who was introduced in Toy Story 3. Trixie? Is it Trixie? Okay. Someone's going to tell me if I've got that right. Okay, who would win in a fight all at the same age of. 
40, The Godfather, Tony Soprano, or Willy Wonka? So you're basically saying all three characters are 40 same years age. of age. Yes. Willy Wonka, Vito Corleone, and yes. Tony Soprano. I, Tony Soprano. Physically, mm. I think he would win. Vito Corleone was, was a smart boss. I mean, he killed people, but I don't really see him as a, a physical see, guy. In a fight, Bakes, I can really see Tony Soprano uh, doing some damage. You don't understand. Bakes has it figured out. Willy Wonka, I'm telling you. There's going to be some hardcore parkour stuff going on. Some you gotta weird take the you got to take the cane away from him. No stuff. weapons. No weapons. No cane? What is no. this? What now, God, now Godfather and Tony can't bring guns too? You said a fight, so I'm thinking physical. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking physical. Okay, no cane, no cane, no cane. Yeah, I, I like the Tony Soprano pick. Yeah, yeah. A Willy Wonka's on the ground with one punch. Willy Wonka's not even a contender. And by the way, 40 year old. Uh, oh, wow, wow, wow. What, we missed a big hand? We missed a huge hand, which has just given Plan uh, Trap 69 million chips, a 30 a chips. million chip advantage over the player in second position. Plan Trap making a bit of a hero call in the river there with two pair. And <laughs> the next hand starts and has a set. We can't even finish our conversation. Wow. Ridiculous. I just want to say to finish, I <laughs> just missed an important hand. We should get back to the action. But uh, we're basically talking about Robert De Niro as, as you know, Vito Corleone, right? So someone to consider. No, 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 no. By the time we get to 40, we're talking about Marlon Brando. He's, Really? He's not, he's not Bob? He's somewhere between no, Bob and... Bob is young, Vito. Bob's like late teens, early 20s, Vito. I say he still looks like Bob when he's 40. How old was Brando <laughs> when he played Vito Corleone? Check it. <laughs> Pretty old, I think. 50s, 60s? Check it. So whoever's closer to 50 is the version that is in the fight. No, 40, you said. Whoever's close to 40. That's what I said right now. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Marlon Brando. Plan Trap wins another pot. Now has nearly Incredible. 80 million. Plan Trap with better than a two to one advantage over Yekka, who sits in second place. This is now a chip lead, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so Marlon Brando was 47 in the first Godfather, but I think for the sake of comparing. The two Godfathers, we have to say in Godfather 2. So Marlon Brando, age Godfather 2. He wasn't in Godfather 2. Touche. Touche. Okay, so 47-year-old Brando. Thank you. Robert De Niro, age, De Niro, in 1974, in when they the made Godfather. The Godfather Part 2, is significantly younger than 40. Brando is closer to 40 than De Niro when it comes to playing Vito Corleone. <sighs> Okay, so he was born in 1943. When did Godfather 2 come out? 74. So he's 29. Thir no, he's 31. Yeah, so they're really close. Of, 31, that's a 47. Of nine years versus seven years. Okay, well, it's really close. I'm just saying. Split the difference, baby. Ace 6, 3 betting the ace, queen of Thune. <laughs> Got to put it in, Thune. We didn't come all this way to fold ace, queen suited, did we? Just getting caught up in all the chatter about Willy Wonka. I like that there's some some people also on my side about that. <laughs> he can move quickly, says Air AI Collector. I mean, things <laughs> still going. Plan traps way, Griffin. Oof. I mean, top pair and the and the flush draw trips on the turn. Talk about having the board crushed. Yeah. God, Robert De Niro was really attractive in Godfather 2. Look at some pictures here. I'm going to say that he was also just such a slight man at that time that even if it was De Niro in the fight, I still give the advantage to Tony Soprano. He's just a kind of Hulk. He has, like, man. heart problems. And, like, you know, uh, Tony Soprano isn't moving around very well. I don't know, like, I don't know. There are brawl. some scenes in The Sopranos where he physically kills people yeah. which are okay. brutal brutal yeah you're right 
Uh, bold strategy cotton here for uh, off Qbert going after the untouchable plan trap who has already outflopped. And we've seen how difficult Ace 10 can play in a three bet spot already, uh, you know, just 20 minutes ago. Good luck. And this is where you really test yourself. Are you prepared to fire again here against the chip leader with a stack to pot ratio no. of not even two to one? Is the chip leader even going to fold a seven here? Are they going to have a jack most of the time? Are they going to have eights and nines and not fold most of the time? But there is that big daddy barrel. So you're sitting there with the six seven, James, and you're like, well, I'm basically drawing dead against like kings. It's true. That's why it's so difficult. But you have to be willing to make that second bet, and not a lot of players are. Well they often just have the one three bet, one bet, one C bet. Despite being bluffed off the best hand there, despite losing that pot, plan trap still phenomenal chip leader. Seventy eight million. Second biggest stack is forty one million. And twenty players remaining now. And 2.1 million. And ooh, the wheel against a king high flush draw. Yeah, I think this is some rightful punishment for through nine. I mean, you're, you're in this spot now and you can't really bet fold here. Um, <gasps> oh, very lucky to make the third highest flush. And I really wish... We had a certain animation we could use here because yeah. this is a street flash bird. Oh, Let's yeah. Do... I forget the song, and this is my new version. Street Have flash. A street, street flash, flash situation. And Thu bets 4.2. Plan trap pays it off. Thu chips up to 32 million. But we are switching, Griffin. Going switching. back to see Chamothers in action with Jax. What'd you say about my mother? Chamothers. <laughs> it is a set of jacks against the queen high flush draw for Senor Juana. That's a gut shot to a straight as well. And with 9 million chips, which is... If I know anything about Sir Juana. Yeah, one... He's not going to fold a straight draw flush draw for 13 bigs. One third average for Senor Juana. And the virtual all in. Chamada says have some of that. Juana. Going to call off the rest. Busy smoking the cigar. Little pay jump, James, uh, out there. You want uh, the pay jump yet. guy. Oh, not more yet. straight draw. Needed a seven, needed a ten, needed a diamond, didn't get it. Oh, you weren't wrong, Griffin. There is a pay jump. Senor Juana out in 18th place. Sorry, I thought we were at 19. Actually, we were at 18. So, yes, Senor Juana, the last player to cash for $1,200 plus head prizes. Now everyone has locked up $1,685. $1,685 now with 17 remaining. That means we're one away from the final two tables. Pretty remarkable how quickly they've been falling. It's silly. Top pair for Avon against the Equator. Queen 8. Equator. Going to see a continue here onto the turn, surely, once Evan hurry up and bets. Ooh, plays it as a check raise, which is, uh, I guess, kind of interesting in a way, but 
Not how I'd play it. Well, this hand has gone to the turn, and Evan is the effective stack. Very close. Only about half a million chips separating these two players. Yeah, so the, the design of that check raise is just to freeze up all of those, you know, hands like King Jack, King Ten, that you can kind of fold out and not actualize equ equity and keep betting. Um, normally you want to just sort of play the mid-pair as just a call so you don't just have your opponent continue with better and then fold worse. But because the bet was so small, I don't hate yeah. what Kamikaze did here. But now is in a position where should know your hand is no good here and be able to find a quick fold. Only really beating hands like 6-7 suited that might have opened on the button here or, you know, 7-9 suited with a black backdoor flush draw. You know, does any high card hands call the check raise because it's repping so thin and then bluff this river? I don't know. Probably not. There's not a lot of, like, random floats. So I think Kamikaze is going to realize this is ace -X a lot of the time and find a fold. And it would be a pretty drastic mistake to um, call here, but does. And that's uh, that's too bad for you, Kamikaze. Oh. And you'll notice, Griffin, we are down to the final two tables. We are wow, at wow, wow. 16 players now in this wow, week's Sunday wow, Million wow. as we approach the second break of the day. Evan opening here with King Jack. Raise and take it. I see the snowman's for Yope. Nam nam, nam nam. And it is a walk. And Evan first to act here with Queen Jack suited. And Evan opens to 1.6 million. How is Yope going to play Kings? I'm assuming it'll get folded to Yope in the small blind. Who re raises to 4 million? Pretty. Uh... Pretty nice price here, James, I gotta say. You know, it looks real strong, but I don't really think you should even fold here. It's two and a half X. So you're not trying to make top pair and get married to it and have kids and buy a house, but you want to flop like that. Yes, that is a pretty you solid flop. to just make straights and flushes. Yes, the combo draw for Evan now facing a continuation bet of 4.8 million. Has the diamond draw, needs the 10 to make a straight. Near enough 42% equity. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't fault just a shove here. And that is going to play as a shove. And, and Yope. Has to call, right? Yes. And the stacks are close, but looks like Evan is going to be the at-risk player here. And is currently behind a lot of cards for Yoke to fade. I guess the question is, looking at this from Evan's perspective, too many outs? <laughs> and the answer is yes. yes. It's the set for Yoke. It's the KO of Evan. That's going to take us to 15, and that is going to take us to the break. So we've played two sessions, played roughly two hours of poker. We started the day with 74. We are already down to 15. It's gone so quickly this evening. It's not really slowed down. Okay, there have been a couple of sessions where small sections of the game where there haven't been knockouts every five minutes, but even so, didn't think we'd get to this point in this amount of time. 
Action resuming inside of five minutes as we welcome Joe Stapleton back into the mix. And Joe, I know you had something you wanted to talk about. Has a fan reached out to you? Yes, a fan reached out and had a question that I'm not really sure how to answer. I figured maybe I could I could crowdsource it, at least to the two of you guys, and maybe if Twitch chat wants to weigh in. This is from Leo, who says, I'm trying to convince my friends to stop using UT UTG as first to act because it's incredibly confusing because it can mean first to act at a six max table, eight max, nine max, 10 max. And so I decided, why don't we give the two positions between under the gun and low jack some names? I came up with Riverboat for the first after UTG because of the origins of poker. So like early poker implying early position and then Tenderfoot for the position immediately after Riverboat. And so now we actually have a name for all nine positions. And if you're sitting eight max, then there is no under the gun. And if you're six max, then low jack is naturally the earliest. Anyway, as Mr. Hold Cards, I thought you could appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Every once in a while, I'll get a, a message from someone who tries to fix something in poker that, like, doesn't really need to be fixed. And I'm never no sure, like, how curt to be in my reply. But I just want to make sure that you guys are just as bored by that as I was. Yeah, I, I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I did genuinely tune out during the middle there. But I think Viscount01, you asked for feedback from the audience, and Viscount01 in Twitch chat, writes no just <laughs> no okay so I, I this is what i'll say i appreciate that this this is important to you and that i i, I like the idea that you tried and you experimented you, you got these grand ideas about river boats and all this stuff but the reality it's very is griffiny. It's, it's very griffiny like yes, it's the yeah, early like, position the early days of poker yeah like yeah well i mean i'm not that bad surely but um I, I would just say that the system Wait. is is pretty clear. Like, it, you really find yourself like really confused when your friends are saying like under the gun or early position, whether it's six max, seven max. Like, no, most of the time when you're telling being really related to history, unless the person is playing a six max ha cash game or a six max specific tournament, or there's twelve players left. That is actually a lot of situations, but they're very rare. I mean, or you're gonna know as it's a it's a pretext this whole thing. So. No, I, I don't agree with the actual positions. I think it's fine the way it is. And, uh, yeah, put that creative energy somewhere else. And all, all I'll say is this. If this, for some reason, does catch on, and I've said it's a bad idea now, I'll just take credit for it later anyway. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to say that you're 100% right. This is a problem that does not need to be fixed. I think all the seats already have established names, right? I know that Under the Gun plus one plus two aren't particularly original, but... They work. Everyone knows what you're talking about. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say leave it. Yeah, save your, save your, uh, save your river boats for when you, uh, you fill up on the last card. Okay. So in closing, Leo, no. Thank you for your question. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't want to shout down people for contributing. And if anyone else has ideas... Um, I could regret this, but by all means, submit them because maybe one out of every 50, might be being generous here, is good and is worthy of our consideration. But now that we formed this panel of judges and we do have an odd number so we can always vote for a majority, we are in a position to give rulings on everything, anything and everything. This one was unanimous. I did have a guy one time wrote to me saying that uh, the antis were unnecessary, that if you just made the blinds bigger... Um, you wouldn't need antis. And to be honest, I couldn't think of a way to tell, I, like, is he right? Well, that's kind of what they did with the big <laughs> blind ante, right? Uh, anywho, players about to return from break. We are at the final two tables in this week's Sunday Million, playing down to a winner tonight. I am going to leave you with expert analysis from Joseph Stapleton and Griffin Benger. All, All right, right babies. Let's go. Let's finish this during James's break. Kamikaze all in with pocket trays. Chamothers is still just smothering everyone. The bounty hunter. 
My name is it Domino be, Hobby. Oh my god, just I'm goes a for it. Bounty hunter calls with Queen 10, King. lots of outs. Queen on the turn, fades the heart Ooh. on the river. Kamikaze, crash bada bing, bada boom. That's my, out. that's my new bust, uh, the bust thing I'm going to do. Yeah, it would be really nice if we could finish this before uh, before he comes back, Joe. It, it's like the equivalent of just like, you know, the the, the, the parent going up to their to their office or, or something and then coming back down and, and we've done all the dishes and he didn't expect <laughs> to do, you know? It's over. Like yeah, we, we We've did done it. all the chores. We mopped the floors. You know, we tried to clean the surfaces. Chamadas. Queen 10 again, the Chamother hand. And right beside each other, Yope Mama and Chamothers. Don't see any reason why Chamothers wouldn't open Jack 7. Suited. Oh, oh never mind. Just kidding. What? I mean, we're about to have an epic clash between. Um, Oh, we've seen this avatar before, the Malma one, and I was just like, "Oh, look, it's like in, uh, in uh, what's it called? My search history." Yes, your search history, but also Blade Runner twenty forty nine. And here we go, off to the races. Good. Another flip. Nine's not looking good after this king high flop. No nine on the river. And you know what they say: everyone loves another elimination. We are down to 13 now. <laughs> Malma out for 1600 bucks. Folds around to Ace King suited for Pop Forick 100. That's an avatar I'd probably hide. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm probably going to hide that one. Is that a big face tattoo? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I don't like it. Yeah. Makes me feel uncomfortable. Pulls around to Kabitza Rush. Head Rush. Kabitza Rush. Ace Diamonds. Shoves into Yope. Shoves for a way below average sack. King five makes the call. Live cards. Here we go. Ace high. The knife. Was holding. Two pair for Yo, but a flush for Kibitza. Not the flush. Close one. And with the blinds. Ooh. Little flat ski at nearly a million. This term is playing pretty shallow. Pair of queens outflops both the sixes and the sevens. Playing sha sha shallow. This will be a very bad decision for either Yope or Renard to put another chip in the middle. Although I guess there's some ways to bluff out a queen at this point. What is Chamother's deal and the weak queens? Queen four is so... Less weak now. Yeah. Two pairs pretty cool. Chamother's bets one big blind and oh. cannot get a call. Switching! Switching! So fun flop for fives, not out flopped, and has some ways to improve. Back nine of diamonds. So much hope yeah, until that sort that of flop. Go. And a walk for Q Bert. <clears throat> King Jack suited for Thu. Did we see how Plan Trap went down to 47? I thought Plan Trap had like 70 million. I guess we moved. Jekka now with 85 million. I think we missed some. We were too busy hanging out with the other guys. But we never should have left Plan Trap. Griffin, do you remember the show Food Party? 
Um, no. It was hosted by a girl named Thu. Pretty funny. Very strange show. I'd be surprised if anybody out there has seen it. That is a challenge to all of you people on uh, Twitch if you have seen it or if you want to pretend you've seen it to get points with Joe. Now would be a good time. Nice work, Thu. A uh, shove from Qbert gets through. Pretty aggressive shove for 16 effective, but I like it. I like it. Jekka with some chips and big slick. Big slick energy. What's up, Pie Face Poker? Thanks for the raid. Welcome all you mixed game move. Oh, the mixed game movement. Oof. Just had a mixed game movement. My friend Steve Al Albini won a horse bracelet. The mixed game movement. Oof. Raise and take it for Jack. Nice. That's right, Pie Face. My first time ever having a piece of someone who won a tournament. I haven't allowed myself to think about how much I would have won if I bought more than 2%. <laughs> I guess five times as much if I had, if I had bought ten percent. <laughs> All right, stop, stop thinking about it. Jekka continuing. Para Jekka is for Thu. Yeah, technically ahead here, but uh, gonna be tough to hold on, especially on that Deuce of Hearts turn, which is a sort of a mandatory continue for Jekka. Got to blast off those Jack X type hands, and there it is with the bet on the turn. Gonna do the job. Just want to point out that horrible. I mean, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but you can't call with the threes on the button there, Idnek. You can't do it, man. You have 15 big blinds. You're set mining. You're better than that. You are better than that. Everyone in Twitch chat is better than that. They would have done that. Only if he misses the set is he better than that. Makes the set. Sorry. Uh, question here by Average by Aggregation, who asks, how are the bounty amounts calculated? They use math. Thank you for your question. So, Joe, were you here for our uh, Godfather versus Willy Wonka versus Tony Soprano question? I was not here for that, no. So I asked, there were three different avatars of those three characters, and I asked, at the age of 40, all three characters, who would win in a fight between Willy Wonka, Tony Soprano, and Vito Corleone? Uh, it's pretty tough. <laughs> right. Because he's got some think... wacky energy with Willy Wonka. Like, he could be crazy, man. Willy Wonka, I mean, is is crazier than both of them. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But also more and more whimsical. I feel like Tony is kind of a, a wimp yeah. deep down. Oh, wow. Okay. See, that's the opposite reaction from James. James really leaned into the whole, like, I've seen him beat up so many people with his unhinged sort of like physicality he went to tony soprano i was leaning more the other ways and we, you're talking about in their prime so like the de niro version of well see that was the interesting thing i saw it as like a 40 year old de niro but then he saw it as more like a 40 year old brando but then i was like okay we had to research the ages and de niro was 31 when he portrayed yeah <laughs> portrayed uh Vito in Godfather 2, and uh, Brando was 47 when he portrayed uh, Vito in Godfather 1. So technically, Brando was closer. If it's the Brando version of Vito, I got to take Willie. If it's the De Niro version, I might have to lean toward Vito. All right, we've got Jekka mm. all in. Yeah, really Has interesting covered here. You can't fault uh, Qbert for squeezing here over this raise and then a flat from the chip leader. You're going to expect if you can get through through nine, which you did with King Queen suited. But Jekka was effectively trapping with the tens and got that bluff raise and now is up to 
One hundred million chips. <laughs> Not just a hundred million chips, but has more than twice the amount of chip chips of Plan Trap, which is the second most chips at this table. Thirteen players remaining. I mean, no one here has it. There's only two players with an average stack. Plan Trap and Jekka. Everyone else well, pretty short. Yeah, good opportunity for a double up here, but this is the problem about finding Live yourself cards. so short stacked. Is you get up against 9-10 and like what? Maybe you got a 20, 25%, 30% edge? Oh, we're going three ways. Oof. Ace King flops two pair. Three's in real bad shape. Jekka can hit a jack, and I don't see that any have been folded. Yeah. And oh, just a unnecessary bet, really. You know, if three comes, would have seen the elimination, but And it was a double up for almost Chan. Ninety. I don't know how this became an Ali versus Titan to Tyson debate, by the way, the Twitch chat, just hijacking our hypothetical and making it about boxing. I can't trust you guys. Queen Jack folds in the small blind. Jekka raising out of the gun. Ace nine. King six suited defense. Potato. The running the shoes. King six. The kicks. Yeah, you didn't like Riverboat. <laughs> Bit of a mystery. <laughs> Bit of a mystery. Easy pickup for Jekka. Didn't have to do anything at all. Just sit there. Jekka now with two paint cards. King Jack off. And blinds are up. Somebody um, somebody either heard Jeff Platt or Ali Najad, or maybe it was Tuckman, call the one million blind level the commentator-friendly blind level and then texted me like Tuckman had ripped me off. <laughs> <laughs> he did. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's just out there. All right. Jekka making this 6.5 million plan trap. Nice try. I would think that maybe there's a shot that other poker commentators have ripped us off. If I don't think anybody watches each other's stuff. I don't think Tuckman tunes in to watch the Sunday million. <laughs> Ace high for Jekka, 510 for the plan trap. Plan not really working out. No trapping possible if you don't make a hand. Jekka just keeps their boot on the neck of this table. Yeah, just smooth sailing for Jekka. King 10 suitor for almost shoving for 8.0128 big blinds. Oh, you're the best. That's why he's the human calculator. Human calculator. It's just, it's just uncanny. Like, I don't even know, like, are you a human? Are you a robot? Like, every time you do it, it's just. It's scary. I scare I myself get, sometimes. I get sent somewhere. I get sent to, like, a future where there are, like, robots walking around. Like, I'm in Westworld when you do that. I, I can't even. It freaks me out, man. It freaks me out how good you are at that. Through with a lock on this. Flopping the nuts. No longer the nuts, but Jekka cannot catch up. Yeah, I don't think this bet's going to get through. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, I saw so I, 
guess you don't have anything close to the nuts now. No, but you have to assume your opponent who's been playing every hand somehow has made a pair. How mad is Qbert now? Oh, with the deuce? So I don't mad. think Qbert Qbert gets mad, right? Such a cute little Qbert. Whoa, Mano Jax. Throwing down the hammer. Where is Sam Grafton? I need insightful poker commentary. I need insightful comments. Thank you for yours. You're banned. That's harsh, man. We're doing our best out here. I, you know, can't be can't every day can't be Sam day. Okay. I just wonder what kind of commentary Sam would have on a twenty-two big blind average <laughs> PKO tournament. I know you didn't mean it, Mano Jax. I know you just this is your way of expressing yourself and. You know, just get an automatic reaction from me and from Joe being, you know, a little bit hurt. It's 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 a cheap thrill, but it's I, I get it. I hope you can come back to us with a better attitude. Some people like the pain. Jacka <laughs> just put it in for a hundred mil. I think he did that because we, we called him the hundred millionaire and everything. That's that's really cool. That's real big boss. Oh stuff. my goodness. <laughs> yeah, there we go. This is legit. It's there we go. All in Jacka body in the clubs. club. Bottle full of bub. Oh, oh straight racing. Somehow fades the flush draw. Everyone survives. Jekka barely even dinged. Man, that would have been sick if the club hit. Yeah. Dude, you know what would have been even <clears throat> sicker? If the nine hit. Because we wouldn't have we wouldn't even have seen it coming, you know. Yeah. We're looking for the club, and we're like thinking, "Oh, they have better hands, bigger hands." If the nine came, we'd be like, "Oh, oh, oh!" And everyone home be like, "Oh my God, so sick!" I, I only was really looking for the club, but, but we don't control the runouts, unfortunately. I mean, the biggest tragedy of that hand is, as commented on the on Twitch there. No longer 100 million chips. That was so boss, just putting in that rack. It's like he knows he's on TV. 100 million, exactly. Griffin, do you say potato or potato? I, you know what? Great minds. I made that joke already, but you delivered it better. So uh, I say potato. Or potato? Yeah. Potato with a decision. There's two million. Doesn't have an ace. Doesn't have an eight. Call for the chip. Potatoes. <laughs> Potatoes. This potato has wings. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> oh, wow. Someone just wrote that. There's the call. This hand ends in a chop. You know what they say, Griff? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves the chop, chop pot. pot. Ding, 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 ding. Why do I always think there's a ding, ding after that? We're already on to the next hand. Jack out flopping jackas. Got some sixes and sevens. It's kind of my claim to fame most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Ten on the turn. <laughs> Aki asking how long the delay is. It's 30 minutes. But we are in the past with you. We're in the future with you. The, the game is in, from the, is in the past. I can never figure it out. Marty, it's, not, it's just sun. <laughs> <laughs> and jacks get real sticky here not a great run out for either hand hey but the queen's enough where we're going we don't need boats 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Pocket sevens for plan trap. <laughs> My favorite part of the day is breaking Joe down. Oh, four would be bad news for our hundred millionaire. I'll just I'll just say that. You guys figure out what I mean. Reading, really looking at the boards because they both they both have straights. I know that the uh, Jacka's avatar isn't Dean Norris from Breaking Bad, but it kind of looks like Dean Norris from Breaking Bad. Jacka's? Yeah. Ace yeah. Deuce just blasting away. Jekka was going to run into it eventually. I mean, you can't fire every street into every player and expect them never to have anything. Yeah, eventually someone's going to be like, hey, check yourself. Check your... Check your privilege. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's better. <laughs> Land trap up to 58 million now. And a shove from Jack Dine. Oh, it's very short. Four big blinds. Jack is going to call. Almost got through, yeah. Two clubs again. And that is the flush for Jacka. There goes. Almost. Almost made the final table. 12 players remain. action third club Ooh. on the flop another flush for jacka my goodness griffin you're well aware of the fact that i haven't made a flush this year right um okay so last time we spoke about how your poker was going yeah uh, it was about i think eight or nine days ago and you said you had not made a flush yet but i don't know if anything's changed since then i haven't played to be honest so okay um it would have been difficult right. to make one now but do you remember what what flush it was? The last one you made was it the the spade one? It was it hearts? I don't remember. It's been so long. It's been that long? Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, you're more far gone than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Through with ace queen, thooted under the gun. <laughs> uh, dominating the plan trap. Big time Who, domination. You know, really doesn't keep his Ooh. strategy very close to the close to the vest with a name like that. Domination rotation. A domination situation. And after this bet, could be a domination exploitation. <laughs> the exploitation continues on the turn. <laughs> Check from Plant Trap, who is living up to their name. Yeah. And yet, Thu does not see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> the trap is the plant, says Omar Sickens. Someone just made such a great, like, obscure John Juwanda reference on Twitch. <laughs> the I had trips thing. Do you remember that? I do remember that. That that gets said a lot when he's on stream. <laughs> yeah, he just, someone just wrote it in the chat. It's, there's you not, know that when he won an EPT? There's no, no one has trips. <laughs> when he, okay, when he won ahead. an EPT, I uh, asked him to say it in the winner's <laughs> interview. And did he? And you just say, I had trips. He goes, okay, I had trips. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought he would say. That's perfect. Uh, thinking about calling for some reason. But not the spot. Oh, no. Thu. <sighs> Running on fumes. Yeah. Fumes? No, I don't think so. I thought oh, Thu boy. knew better. It neck. It gone. 
Just get like, in big trouble. Just like shove pre bro, you know, or 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 girl. Just just go all in. Gonna get a fold. Instead, you're playing guessing games with uh, Metal Gear Solid over here. Slash. Whoops. Ooh. That could be it for it, Nick. I don't see Jekka folding. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Wow. I mean, we've seen Jekka make a lot of very loose pre-flop calls and folds top pair. That was some Dr. Jekka and Mr. Hyde stuff right there. Oh, wow. Pure evil. Through all in now. Hits a jack. Jekka hits a five. No further improvement for Jack. In fact, it's two pair for through a double up there. So, someone asked, what's the story with John Joanna? I'll do a very, very quick uh, summary of it. There was some sort of cash game where I think Patrick Antonius had a, had a straight flush or a royal flush. And at the end of the hand, they're just talking about how crazy it was. And John Joanna was just like, I had trips just the way it just wasn't. It was just not. It was one of those things like, you know, you say what you had, but like it really wasn't relevant. It's no, it's, it wasn't a big deal. It was like four flush on the board. And he, said he just it. felt like he needed to say something. He just, yeah. And it just became a meme. Uh, it just became a meme. Everybody loved it. It's all over YouTube, I'm sure. I had trips. Potato with the best hand. Just king high, though. Pretty tough to stand up to even this bet of 1.5 million with that stack and that hand. Yeah, say what you want about Jekka. But winning some nice uncontested pots. You know, I know the king seven seems like a really bad fold. But that has a lot to do with us seeing the cards. That situation, you shouldn't have your opponent be spazzing off with mid-pair there. It was very pretty random. A lot of the time, they should have a better king or, you know, trapping aces or something. So I don't really blame... Hey! Thu wins what should have been a chop pot, makes a flush. Jekka down below 70 million now and blinds up over 1 million now. And all of a sudden, our 100 million man or woman to pump me up is down to 67. And let's flop the pair here. And sometimes, yep, sometimes when you, oh my goodness. Oh man. Get to betting, two, partner. Two pair now for Jekka. Oh! oh, restoration. You didn't see that coming, huh, Jekka? Jekka's slide continues. It neck doubling up to 65 million. Jekka down to 35. This is a Greek tragedy. Things were looking so good for Jekka. And now is down to under 30 big blinds. Wild. And out oh. flops. And Jekka will not stop betting. Jekka has got a club, but something. It's true. That is something. That is a lot of something. Uh, yeah, another flush. Yeah. So many flushes. And gets the fold. From the non-club Jack. Pocket tens for it neck. Jack at Jack at nine. Folds it. Queen ten for Qbert. Can't resist. Feels like a time to get it in. Nope. Yeah, it might be a bit too many chips for a show, but might have seen a, a, a raise. raise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. On like 16, 17 bigs. Queen ten's kind of bleh. But you can, yeah, you can raise blockers or I could just say you can raise big cards in late position with 16 bigs if you want to just try to take one down. It's good to know. I might actually write that down. That feels like mm -hmm. good enough for the notepad. 
16 bigs. <laughs> you guys hear big. the click click of the pen, right? He's he's really doing it. He's you not just can raise. This isn't just a bit. Big cards to try to take it down. Cool. I haven't added to that in a long time. Noted. Hubert with a somewhat of a tough decision. Does make the call at second pair. It's no good. Potato picks that one up. And that is the problem with raising king five suited in early position when you're just playing 15 bigs. Sometimes it's tough to win. <laughs> He's cleaning jams. Another one for potato. Hubert defends king eight and ace high flop top pair for Thu. Cast Cap says, "Who are these two guys? They look like ranch hands on an episode of Bonanza." Okay. <laughs> All right. That's from the that's from the Colgate Comedy Hour, right? <laughs> I'm gonna have a. I've been trying to drink this gazpacho all day, but it burned my lips. <laughs> I do we were expecting <laughs> ice cold gazpacho, and then it's room temp. It's going to no. burn you. It's going to be yeah, very, yeah. It's gonna burn your lips. <laughs> do you have a nutcracker? <laughs> Where be thy nutcracker? <laughs> Queen 10 suited under the gun for Thu. <laughs> King Queen for Plan Trap. <laughs> Griffin, have you ever watched um, On Cinema at the Cinema? No, but I've I've heard of it. So Mike Mike Sarah recommended it to me, and it it's a delight. It's so fun. How, what, how, is it old? It's old. Yeah, it's it ran from like. I want to say like 2013 to 2017, and they review movies. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's Tim uh, Heldnicker. Yeah, wow. Really, really well reviewed. Yeah, and 9.1 on IMDb. Plan Trap value betting the best hand gets a fold. Uh, it is super. It, it has like a running storyline for five years, even though it's a movie review show. <laughs> Amazing. And they okay, always. I'm going to watch it on my break, actually, and get back they, to you. Uh, they rate movies based on bags of popcorn. Okay. And they. They almost never give a movie less than a hundred percent rating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna watch it. Super, super funny. Is it all? Just, is it just all on YouTube? Trip Six is for through in America. We have Cartoon Ooh. Network, an app. Okay. So I'm not sure what you'll have to watch it on, but I'll figure it out. I'll find it. Top pair. Lawrence yeah, saying on cinema is still going. Okay. Can I just I'm say that's like season seven or eight. It's a pretty unlucky uh, <laughs> turn card there for our our jilted uh, jilted Jekka. Yeah, Jekka's just really getting beat up. Really right now. falling apart over here. Like, pretty sure Thu is playing this as a check shove. <laughs> like, and Jekka's just not gonna be happy. Griffin uh, D generator. Uh oh, we saw Jekka full top pair before. Is this gonna be? Nearly the end for Jack. It does get away from it. Nice fold. Uh, what happened to Jack's stack? It looks like the time Tiny Dinky Daffy got pancaked by a drunk dump truck driver. <laughs> I haven't seen a baby this aggressive since uh, Harley Jar. <laughs> Pair of nines good for potato. If Jekka doesn't come back, I don't even know what I'm going to tell you I'm going to do on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> Two pair now for Potato. ZQA says, hi, Joe. Hi, Z.
playing trap. Cannot trap. Tato finally gets a value bet out there. Running low on time bank. Jacka more like Jenga. <laughs> it's a great joke. It's my kind of joke, at least. <laughs> And Potato does eventually get the fold. You know, I've had I've had potatoes a lot away, but never folded. King five against King Trey. Pair of fives for Potato is going to make it very difficult for Jacka to win this hand. Admiral Brown asks, how many players left? Well, if you take the total number in the left-hand corner and then subtract 12 from it, that will tell you how many players have left. Yeah, so you Thank see you. how it says 9,738 in the corner? Yeah. So you subtract 9,738 from 12. So you're going to have to go backwards. And um, it's, yeah, it's something like that. Jack has shoved nines out. into King Jack. And King Jack does not call. Plan trap with the eight nine suited. The hand of the day. Pocket tens for potato. Seven eight nine, almost a street flashboard. Street eight. flash. Ah. Uh. 8-9 continuing into an over pair. Oh, oh street flash board. We see the 10 of clubs is folded. I'm all in. Uh, how do you fold two tens here? I guess sometimes you're up against jacks and queens. And kings and aces. And how about sevens and sixes? How could they be sweeter? Griffin may be a good poker player, just cringe as hell. Guess what? You may be uh, banned. Thank you for your comment. I thought you were saying that to me. I was so hurt. <laughs> I didn't really Ten of clubs realize is taken, Joe. Comment. Yes, I said that. Thank you for your comment. You're also banned. Okay, great. Anybody else? I'm doing some banning. Anybody? Anybody else need a ban? I would prefer if you read comments, you know, read the nice ones like late rec, you know, he thinks I'm really clever. How many rounds of what Mr. Carl? Unity has zero says, wait, the commentators ban people here on this Twitch and not the moderators? You tell me. Oh, wait, you can't. You ban. Thank you for your question. Jekka raising ace 10 suited. I always find that the the masochistic ones really interesting where they're like, oh, I hope he doesn't ban me. <laughs> oh, no, please don't. Oh, no, please, please don't. don't ban me and give me a story. <laughs> don't put the tape around my mouth. <laughs> Okay, Jekka, what's it going to be? Are we betting again here? You have these this double gut shot. Your opponent's going to have a lot of eights and nines. Eights are going to fold sometimes. We do see a bet. Ugh. One yeah. more bet. Ugh. Jacka with the ace. Jacka. Nice. Thu with king 10 in the small is going to defend. And Potato with a nice defending hand and lots of equity. Top pair. What you going to Thu? What you going to Thu when king 10's dealt to you? Hi, Kiki. 
Aww. What's up, baby? Meow. Meow. Lou. It's Wurt says, Joe, can you please do some more one-liners like you did in the big game? Hey. It's very, very difficult to do one-liners while commentating live online poker. The action's a little too fast. There's not a lot of time to squeeze them in to even think of them, let alone get them in there. But <laughs> okay, there's Kiki. Me. There's Kiki, yes. We've got new episodes of the <laughs> PSPC coming out. Oh, no. Jack is in big, big trouble now. Yeah. Coming out every Friday on YouTube, and there's lots of one-liners in there. Great TV coverage. Will Jack a come back? That would be a good. I like a good redemption story. You know, start at the top, then you, then you, you know, collapse like like Dark Knight Rises. You know. Wait. Does he die at the end of that one? You're, oh, you're it's unclear. He he dies. It's unclear. Did Michael Caine really see him at that restaurant in the south of France? We'll never know. Stapes fan asks, what's the average stack at this point? It's the total number of chips divided by the total number of players. Thank you for your question. Top pair for it, Nick. Some draws for Plant Trap, one of which drills into the turn. It, Nick, that's a, a chop. That's a buck wild turn card. Not going to lie. NGL. Like just the stone nuts, and you just blast, blast. I wish people would just take it easy a little bit, you know. Don't just snap bet nineteen million here. Just like take a second. Oh Maybe boy, we have you... lost a player at the other table, down to eleven, and it neck now very short. Plan trap. Now the table captain with nearly a hundred million. Somehow does not outflop Ace Eight with Seven Eight. Will Plan Trap make a plan to bluff this hand? Nope. Best hand does take it down. Uh, this could get a little dicey between these two big stacks. King Queen. Sourdough suited. We've lost another player off the other table. Ten players, which means we are going H for H. My favorite time. Switching. It's it's like it's almost oh. just like a, a oh. remix of world famous bubble coverage, you know? It's just like final table bubble. It's just like a little it's just like a little it's like a jackass four point five kind of thing, you know? Not quite a jackass movie, but still really good. <laughs> I like the switching back and forth so we get to the official FT. <laughs> yeah. Top Forek 100. Completing with 6-5 suited. A bit's a rutch. Flopping a flush draw. Pretty advantageous board for the in position player here. Going to be tough to win this one. Pop. Voki asks, how many blinds are in play at the moment? That's a every really... single one. Thank you for your question. Yeah, you gotta love you gotta love semi bluffing. Semi bluffing a flush draw. Ah, it's a great feeling. You must love semi bluffing because 
it's really the only way for you to win pots when Correct. you have flush draws because Correct. you never make the flush. Correct. So you must that must be something you've really worked on. Correct. I don't get folds either though. It's really pretty awful. Oh. Yeah. So the only way that you win money poker is when you buy small percentages when you realize you should have bet more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, plant trap calling it off against Ace Nine. Oh. King I flop. Baby and doll. Hubert is eliminated. Out in tenth place. That's we have the, reached the final table. That's the bubble sound of pop, but bursting. Yes, it is an eight max event, but the final table plays nine handed. Playing a table of five and four is a no bueno. Plan trap with 110 million will be headed to the final table as chip leader. Kabitza Rush is next with just under 100 mil. Thu up to 75 million. Shamothers still in here. Asafme, Top Forek, Itnek. Potato and Jacka bringing up the year. Final nine players. Everyone now guaranteed over four thousand dollars. You know, if I wasn't looking at all these names, I would say that they're made up. The way, you're just like, well, in a way, they are made up. Guy. Oh, that's good by point. nine individual people. Whoa, that is like mega deep. Raceland the Great asks, "What are the payouts? That's the amount of money that the players will get." depending on where they finish. Thank you for your question. King Jack under the gun for Pop Forick. Pocket nines from Chamothers. In. And a nice Queen Jack suited in the big blind here for the chip leader. Did you say Squeeze Jack suited? <laughs> Why squeeze when you could just pop off top pair? Top pair, and when you're dominated. Joe, Pretty which cool. poker moment have you commentated which stands out as the most memorable? Um, other than my shark cage win, because I know that's you've told me in private many times that that's your number one. What is your favorite? Uh, I think it's going to be Adam Friedman winning the dealer's choice for the second time was probably my most memorable. Why? Look at that. Pop Forek. Pop Forek must be so mad. So mad. I've had some memorable moments. Vicky Korn winning a second EPT. Pretty memorable. Sebastian oh, Mallets. Oh. Pretty me memorable. And uh, Ernest Wiggins on the big game. Running four times. I mean, come on. How do you ever forget that? So he ran it four times against was it Phil Helmuth and won all four? Was that he won three of four when he was a nine to ninety one dog. <laughs> Flipping for Jack as tournament life. No king, no jack, no ten. King on the river, but oh, Joe. a set of nines for Cabeza. Yeah. <laughs> Already the winner. There yeah. goes Jekka. Out in ninth. For forty-seven hundred fifty-five dollars plus, plus another five K in bounties, so not a bad payday. Not bad at all. Ooh, a couple nice suited hands here, but into big blind. Let's see three. Boring. Bates a rush up to 135 million now. Under the gun for Potato. Just raising two big cards. Is this is this your is this what you just said? About what? The note that I just wrote. Is this it? 16 bigs, you can raise big cards to try to take it down. Yeah, this is exactly that. And it looks like it's worked. Top pair for Potato. Got him. Got him. Not a lot of love lost for Jekka in the chat. <laughs> no. People do uh, not like to see a squandered thing. fortune. No, 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 they don't. 
They don't. Um, it's funny, though. A little bit. Wow, Just look at this flop, Griff. Yeah, that is action. Is this going in or what? Yeah, it's 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 a fickle thing. Some some players are just very likable to, to 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 sort of people watching, and then sometimes there's someone that's running over a table and they make one mistake where they fold the best hand, and then they love seeing the collapse. It's the whole hero watching the heroes fall thing, you know. Cheka deserves to be the first on the final table with how bad he played the final two tables. Yikes! Harsh. So, Tony Soprano misses everything, and now it net going for value, and ain't going to get it. It is such a fickle game. Like, oh, you're like, oh, I'll just... It's just so hard to get value after you can't be beat. Yeah. Pocket aces for Chamothers. It's like the movie Dark Knight Rises, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about Bane's arc, he just seems unbeatable, undestroyable. You and... chose the dark. I was born in it. <laughs> How are you going to do that? By crashing this plane. With no survivors. <laughs> Get neck with pocket aces now. Plan trap did not hit a set. Oh, you think pocket threes are your ally? And that takes it down the bed of the flop. Griffin, do you and mm. Kasuv keep in touch? You know what? Um, we don't, but I was very sad to have seen him in Monte Carlo and we didn't didn't catch up, didn't uh, didn't have a drink. Talk about the moment that bonded us forever. I mean, that's a weird thing, man. You didn't, you didn't play crabs together? We didn't play crabs together, no. <laughs> um so, yeah, no, it's we're, we're we don't talk. Asafa May raises ace queen, gets defended by 7 4. Excuse me, 7 5. And that 5 is no good on the flop. Asaf May continues. Oh, it's two pair for Kapit Saraj. Oh my goodness. This is absolute nightmare fuel. You know, when you have a stack to pot ratio of just over one and a half to one. Checks to Asafa. Asaf? Asa? Yeah, and betting over half your stack, you're not going anywhere. Asa for me. Ace for me. Gets the rest of it in, drawing thin, but does catch the Asa for me. Barry Greenstein up in the river. Asa for me, Asa for you. Double up, survive, still eight players remaining. Only Jacka so far has dropped at the final table. Everybody at this point guaranteed $6,600 plus bounties. Let's welcome back into the booth, James Harding. Thank you, Joe. And worth highlighting that Chamothers, who started day two as chip leader, is at the final table, ranked fifth right now. But it is Cabeza Rush with the big chip lead, more than 100 million. Players returning from break in five minutes. I'll tell you what I did during the last 20 minutes. I noted down some of the questions that were going past in chat and thought we'd turn this into a Ask Griffin Anything little segment of the show oh. uh, <laughs> while we're on break from the final table. A Platino asked Griffin, if you could change one rule in poker, what would it be? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, one rule in poker. I don't know. I know Joe's answer. Joe would say the okay. whole idea of checking back the nuts. I know you hate that one, Joe. I really don't like that rule at all. Yeah, I, I just think that oh, man. the amount of collusion it prevents is like infinitesimal compared to like the number of people who like just make a mistake. And uh, I just don't think you should be forced to bet at any point. Like, well, I mean, it's your decision. So I actually did it once 
in uh in a uh, so i i kind of agree with you joe i did it once in an ebt in a particular spot that i just i i had the nut straight at like broadway and i knew my opponent was was not going to call with any hand but the same one it would have just been raise 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 it was like i bet they raise basically right and i just called with the nuts and i got a penalty and i, I was thinking it was just like i wanted to see his hand when he raised me you know whether it was a bluff or it was the nuts. If I re-raise again, I was never going to call with worse, and I got a penalty. And I know it's because it's the rule, but I agree. I think that should be changed. Okay, that is the rule that we want to have changed. Mr. Bumass asks Griffin, favorite toast topping? Ooh, um, toast topping. Probably cream cheese. Okay. Um, but if, if I'm getting a little uh, sweet toothy, probably Nutella. Okay, we've gone... Savory yeah. and sweet there. Two answers for the price yeah. of one. Uh, Principath, a common question we get, but worth addressing for people who are new to this format, why the small difference between first and second? Come on, Griffin, wheel out the standard response, explain how PKL works, and why first and second effectively get the same from the price. <sighs> You're really making me work for my money today. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, effectively... When you get heads up, I think I know the answer to this properly. When you get heads up, there's a bount, there's a bounties that are left, whether it's your bounty, your opponent's bounty, yep. every, all the bounties that are left, it's going to equal, like when you win the tournament, you get that other person's bounty. So all the, their eliminations, all that sort of stuff. So it's going to double your prize money often, maybe even more than that. And that's why the first and second are so close, are pretty much the same because the additional prize is whoever gets the last bounty, the last, the yeah. last bounty. There you go. Um, I think, Joe, when we first started streaming progressive knockouts during stadium series and during WQ 2020, this question came up much more frequently. And I think it was interesting, Griffin, you may have contributed to this conversation, but certainly Sam mentioned it a few times, that when the PK format launched, there was a difference between first and second. And the feedback from players was, this is ridiculous. The discrepancy, once you factor too, in that final bounty, yeah. it's so ridiculous that this just doesn't work. And that's when they got evened out. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, I didn't. I wasn't aware of, of that there was an issue with it, but that makes sense. Yeah, I am incredibly curious, however, how they come up with whatever that difference is. Yeah, like, that's very strange to me. It, and the, the difference varies week to week, right? Sometimes yes. it's literally a few cents. Sometimes it's a whole dollar. And look, I guess there's some algorithm somewhere which is calculating it based on the prize pool and the number of players. And I'm sure. It, there's logic somewhere, but ultimately it's near enough the same. It's not enough of a difference for anyone to be complaining about it and certainly not for any I, deal to be done. I wonder if there's going to be a situation where it's like the like a, like, like, a, like a lunar eclipse type of thing where it's just like the exact one one tournament where it's the exact first and second. That'd be cool. So cool. That'd be awesome. Like That'd seeing a triple cool. rainbow or something. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> uh, Griffin, you're not wrong to say that we've made you work for your money today, but the good news is, my friend, you have earned a break. Uh, <sighs> Joe and I will continue following the eight-handed action in this week's Sunday Million as we return to the final table. Uh, as you mentioned, Joe, just the one elimination so far. Former chip leader, Jekka, or Jekka, the Ukrainian player, went out in ninth. We do have one short stack right now, and that is Batato playing 21.6 million with the blinds currently at 700,000, 1.4 million. And obviously we do have a, well, I guess a two big monster stacks, two players pretty much yeah. tied for the chip lead. Cabeza Rush with 106 million and Plan Trap with 98 million. Thu's doing okay also, above average for Thu. Everybody yes. else below average at this point. And you can see what the players are worth, the bounties next to the target symbol. And the red target is with Asaf Mi, who has the single biggest head prize on offer right now, more than $3,000. But we are at that point, when you look at the payouts, when you look at the jumps with each elimination, where the bounties play less of a factor in the decision making. By the way, Pop has flopped gold here, has flopped the full house, and has Plan Trap doing the betting for them. Except for now, they're going to bet real small. I think this is a pretty trivial fold at this point with Queen-10. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, no, no, no. This is a badly planned trap, plan trap. Yeah, the trap should not be the plan here. Plan retreat. Plan fall back. 
plan fold. I don't know how, like, if you're a tattoo face here, how you don't get it in, though. You just assume oh, they have something. You've got to think, yeah, I'm, I'm up against maybe pocket eights if I'm lucky. Plan fold. That should definitely be the plan right now. Drawing What's funny dead. is there's a really hot burger spot in L.A. called Plan Check. Okay. Which is <laughs> kind of pokery. Um, have you done the international tour of the final table yet, Joe? I absolutely have not. So obviously we did lose Yeka from Ukraine. We have got two Brazilians at this week's final table. Uh, the short stack and the big stack. So Batato is from Brazil. Cabeça Rush is from Brazil. Itnek is playing from Estonia. Chamothers from the UK. Asaf Me is Canadian. Uh, Pop for Ik is also Ukrainian. So two Ukrainian players made the FT this week. Uh, Thu Nine is from Sweden. And Plan Trap, as we referenced earlier on this evening, is from Armenia. Chamothers from the UK, James. That is true. I'm wondering if this is now going to be the MO every single week that we do have this fast KO bonanza during the first couple of hours, get down to the final table before the second break, and then play, I guess, a slightly meatier final table. Most I would of the say fairly normal final table, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it seems to me that Last week was not dissimilar, right? I mean, it wasn't as ridiculous as this week, but we got to the final nine inside of three hours. Yeah, I I think that when we find someone like a Yekka who accumulates that many chips but has maybe a little bit more experience, that we could yeah. see a pretty fast overall day in a Sunday Million. Yeah, but when that happens, when someone runs up a big stack like that and then sort of distributes it back out, obviously things going to slow down again. A seven versus a eight, and the kickers are playing. So this pot likely to go to Chimothers, and it goes check check. Chimothers up to sixty six million now. Blinds will be up within a minute. We will go to the eight hundred thousand one point six million level. This guy, Marcelo Silva, is asking, can you guys do an American accent? I'll try. Go for it. Itnek raising. Queen nine suited. Ooh, oh another queen nine suited for two mothers. Was that believable? It was really good. Pretty good, right? Okay. I mean, have you actually had any professional coaching? I know you've done a kind of bit of acting, but I think that's generally been more facial performance rather than vocal performance. Yeah. Have you... Yeah. Uh, have you had, like, a dialect coach? No, that was just me going for Amazing. just winging it. Amazing. Yeah. So here we go with the next blind level. And uh, a Hollywood guy says, James, could you please reference where all the feedback is from players wanting more bounty tournaments? 2 plus 2 is mostly blank on the subject. Yeah, the days of 2 plus 2 are kind of, like, gone. Um Look, there is a Pokestars community forum, but again, I do think the Discord server, where we also have our podcast channels, and there's also channels dedicated to Twitch, Ambassadors, and Pokestars Learn, but also feedback as well. Discord is a good place to kind of let your feelings be known. Well, a set of sevens shrink up considerably on this turn card. You still like it, but... Four cards straight. Not cool. Ooh, two pair for two mothers. Is there a um is there a prompt in the chat for Discord? Let me just try and see if this works. <laughs> there is. There we go. I just linked you. Is Thu gonna be able to raise? Nope, just to call it the set. Hunter, 
Raise and take it. Asks James, which part of England are you from? South London. Is it uh, warmer in South London? No. <laughs> the weather's just as bad. A lot of people from High Barnet like to go to uh, South London for the winter. <laughs> Catch some race. Did you just call it High Barnet? High Barnet. Oh, come on, buddy. You lived in the city for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, in fact. I never went at Zone 7. Barnet, mate. It's Barnet. Hi, Barnet was on my list of top five uh, tube stops that sound like a butler I'd want to party with. Watford. Croxley. Hi, Barnet. I don't remember what the fourth one was, and the number one was Cockfosters. <laughs> the fourth one was it was a two-person name. I just can't remember what it, what it was. It wasn't Chow Font and Latimer, but it was something like that. Oh, here we go. The classic matchup. Yeah. A small flush draw for Bop. Potato with a pair of tens. Look, we are live on YouTube and on Twitch. It's just that most of the YouTube comments are complete garbage. <laughs> What's, what's going on? Why are we taking so long to build a top pair? Let's go. Come on, potato. It's not top pair. It's second pair. But anywho, it's all oh. in. And there is the flush. And the full house. Oh! The oh! ace of hearts oh! on the turn. The ace of diamonds on the river. Barry Greenstein lets it all hang out in style. And potato doubles up. So that means it is Pop, who's now at the bottom of the leaderboard. Pop down to 22 million. I try, I try not to be blatantly rooting against certain players, but the faster that avatar gets out of here, the better. The guy with the kind of blue face, you mean? Yeah. Mm. not convinced by it next either to be honest so here we go again pair of queens against a small flush draw it's a dog that looks like a cat you don't like that it doesn't look like a cat it looks like a dog gone wrong flush another flush flush for your mothers Yes, Dana, I'm not talking about you. You're a normal person having normal chat things going on on YouTube. There's always an exception that proves the rule. Ooh, ace queen versus kings. This could get fruity. Well, Asa for me does not want an Asa this time. Three bets to 11.2 million. That will get rid of the blinds, and then it'll be up to Itnek whether to go with Ace Queen. No.
Pocket nines under the gun for plan trap. So what was your take on the whole fist fight situation between Soprano, Corleone, and Wonka? Well, I, I needed to figure out which Corleone we were talking about. Well, bear in mind, first of all, this is based on avatars. So okay. clearly it's Brando. And the Griffin did say that they would all be around 40 years old. So that is kind of like Brando era Corleone rather than De Niro era Corleone. I just don't... I know this is going to sound crazy. I don't picture that era of Brando really being all that capable of, like, a lot of physical violence. I agree. That's why he had Luca Brasi. Yeah. And that's why... Uh Based on some of the physical acts of Tony Soprano and his ability to crush people's necks and skulls, he's got to be a shoe in I mean, he'll snap Wonka just like that. Well, what you have to worry about is that Wonka's like magic. He's so not magic. He's just a bit of a freak. Oh, well, I don't know. He's got, he's kind of like the Joker, right? Like he's a skinny guy, but like scary. Nah, I reckon he's gone in one punch, quite frankly. I mean, he only needs two inches of that brown water to drown Tony Soprano in. <laughs> it was meant to be chocolate. I, I, I hear you. It, it did not look pleasant. <laughs> They didn't say whether it was chocolate that had been consumed or not or yet. Oh. Poor Augustus. And just to be clear, guys, no weapons. Wonka does not have his cane. He doesn't have gum. He doesn't have everlasting gods gobstoppers. He doesn't have his freaky boat with the chicken's head being cut off on the screen. It's just No involvement Wonka. from Slugworth? No. Slugworth's real name. Archibald. No. Well, who is oh, he you mean the actor's name? No, who is he revealed to be at the end of the film? Harry Turnbuckle? Williamson. Wilkinson says Raksha. Oh, so close. Is it Wilkinson? Uh-oh, uh -oh, did James... Uh-oh. I always thought it was Williamson. Well, someone's just slightly misremembering it. Uh, another I've fun one here. This time, this time it is truly top pair versus a flush draw. And the top pair holds. I was just thinking about that other weird Tim Burton Willy Wonka like yesterday or the day before, which what parts of it I kind of like, but the, but what he chose to do with the Oompa Loompas was very strange. Pocket eights for it, net calling the raise from Thu. Pocket sixes for Kabeza. Asa for me, folds queen five. Would have flopped two pair. By far the best of it. Gotta play the Ramon, queen five. Getting another vote for Wilkinson on YouTube. Yeah, I, I think I've just misheard it all these years. I could have sworn that Gene Wilder says Williamson, but... Memory... I'll I'll defer to the majority. Fallible. Yeah, no, you're right. That too. I mean, as I said, it's not a movie I've seen in many, many years. And even when I used to watch it as a kid, there were certain 
songs I would fast forward. Like, has anyone actually ever sat through Cheer Up Charlie? Honestly? The riverboat scene I would skip, generally. I mean, how? How? Warners, come on, how? How did that end up in the movie? <laughs> you're gonna love, you're gonna absolutely love the offer. It's so good. It's, you already love The Godfather. The story of getting it made is so interesting. All the studio stuff, the struggles, the the fights between Paramount and, and Gulf and Western, it's just great. You're going to love it. Obviously, I know a lot of the story already from Robert Evans' book, The Kid Stays in the Picture, but I'm intrigued to see it. And um, I think it's coming to the UK very soon because I keep there's a countdown. Every time I switch on Sky, there's a countdown. Paramount Plus launches in three days. And oh, cool. so okay. it's going to be... As Sky has Peacock and Paramount Plus incorporated into it, so we'll get all that content soon. I really hate to say it, but there's like, you know, I subscribe to uh, I God knows how many of these streaming services, mm. and they all have something that I re that like is kind of worth it. Well, that's the that's the catch, right? I mean, as I said to you before, there is still the agreement between Sky and HBO for all of the HBO shows, but HBO Max, there's no guarantee. And that Tokyo Vice series? Yeah, yeah. That's been sold to Stars Play in the UK, which requires oh. a subscription through Amazon Prime. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah. That show is like not brilliant but because of the subject matter is something that's so interesting you really kind of get into it you know obviously right. like we don't know as westerners we don't know a lot about japan we don't know a lot about yakuza so it's a flush yep. by the way that's all a flush. five of them By the way, I'm I have Amazon Prime. If it were on Prime, not a problem. It's that you've got to pay for a se separate subscription once you're into Amazon Prime. As I said, that's what's not happening. So I think we're going to end up getting Jurassic Park on Peacock like relatively quickly, okay. which is good because I've heard it's horrific. So Amazon Prime UK currently has the latest Bond movie, and it also has House of Gucci. That just recently appeared. And I think at the moment, everything, everywhere, all at once is available exclusively on Prime as a rental. But I think it will be coming to Prime like normally within a, probably a few weeks. Yeah, it's already on Peacock here. Now you can just watch it if you subscribe. They've been doing this weird thing now where like you'll get a movie like The Northman was on Peacock for like a week or two for free, quote unquote. Then it went to digital rental where you had to pay twenty dollars to rent it, and now it's back. That's so on weird. Peacock. You think you do the digital rental first before you made it available for free? Well, it's not. That's the thing is, it's not free, right? Because you have to subscribe to Peacock right. for it. So, but if you are already a Peacock subscriber, yeah, you just have to catch it in the right window. Yeah. Anyway, we've got Plan Trap here making a move on the flop, and still has the best hand with King High. Takes it down and blinds up to 1 million, 2 million. That is putting the pressure on Pop. It's putting the pressure on Itnek. Pop now with just eight big blinds. And under the gun with King Jack suited. May decide to go with this, does, and will be dominated by the chip leader in the big blind with ace jack might be time to say goodbye and it is a domination situation and no king and pop goes pop that is a ko and we have our eighth place finisher and that'll be pop for ick cashing out for six thousand six hundred and eighty one dollars plus two and a half k in bounties as Cabeza Rush increases their chip lead at this now seven-handed final table with close to 121 million chips. Mohammed Mohammed says, guys, you're not commentating the game at all. I thought we just covered a bust out. Did the guy just about did we miss that? Did we miss that bust out? Uh, no, we didn't miss the bust out. Uh 
I don't want to oh, miss guess this comment. What? I guess he, he's the one not commentating anymore. <laughs> uh, we also missed a comment from my tantalizing taint who says, you don't have to subscribe to Peacock. There's free stuff on Peacock, but right. it's very limited. Like, you can watch some of the episodes of The Office, maybe some of the movies. I'm not sure. So we still have a couple of players in the danger zone. Danger zone! One of them in this hand, Potato, with ace-10 up against the ace-queen of Thu. The Swede with the best of it. And raises wow. to 11 million. And if Potato folds here, they'll be left with 10 big blinds and not dissimilar stack to Itnek who's the other player at immediate risk. Blue Winter says, watch the game yourself. The on-screen movie talk is way better. We can do both. Okay, Asaf me with the ladles. Pocket jacks makes it 12 million. Um, that's a sizable raise. That's a I have jacks and don't want a call raise. That's a re-raise. Ah, I missed the open it. from Plan Trap. My apologies. I've missed the under the gun open with the Spraggy Ace 7 offsuit, which Plan Trap wisely folds. Uh, we've got aces now for Chimothers. Playtry asks, when is the next live tournament? <laughs> Sick. In Bahamas. That will be PCA 2023, which will also host the second PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. If you go to PokerStarsLive.com, you'll see the dates for the PCA Festival and the specific dates for the PSPC. As we get Potato moving all in here with Ace Queen, it neck with Ace 10. Fault it. Just over six months. And to be clear, this will be a new venue. This will be someone we've not been before. This will be at Baja Mar, a luxury resort in Nassau. with you Marcelo can we go back in time when you didn't have to subscribe for nothing it was much better you would buy a game or a movie and was yours for lifetime with no lifetime bill I'm with you I'm with you some something to that the one thing we got going for us though is that there is a lot of good stuff out there yeah um, small kind asks is the PSPC a 25k freeze out again yes $25,000 entry platinum passes available via the Road to PSPC live events and the PSPC Megapath running online on Stars, And Ace King is all in here and Potato may call with Ace Queen and this will be a domination situation in Itnek's favor, which I guess Itnek will be happy about. Chimothers really wanted to call it off. Eight, nine, ten. Jack on the river. It's a straight for Ooh. Potato. Domination, rotation, and Itnek is KO'd in seventh place. We are now six-handed at the final table of this week's Sunday Million. And we are now in a situation, Joe, where there are no short stacks per se. Now you're going to have to play. For real. What did I just say about the PSPC and the PCA being at a new venue? You said that it was going to be at Bahar Mar. 
Correct. So there's, that has already answered the question about where it's being held. Good. Just wanted to check. Wing suited. Domination situation. Uh oh. Asa continuing. Nothing Thu can do. Thu can do it when you be in queue it. <laughs> wow. Asa kind of undervaluing themselves here. Letting Thu off pretty easy on that turn yeah. bet. Especially if your opponent has a draw or something too, right? If they got a straight draw, if they got diamonds, you really want to give a slightly worse price than that. Now Asa betting nearly full pot when the board is worse for a pair of queens. Maybe we'll cause some confusion here with the size of this bet after none of the draws really come out. Twenty-four near enough full pot. I mean without that king on the river, there's a better chance that this gets paid, I guess. Yeah, and you can see why this does feel a lot like you have top pair and your opponent's trying to take you off of it. You're blocking king, queen. So you might feel like this is, uh, this is this does look kind of bluffy. It's just we don't know how balanced Asa will be yeah. in general in this spot. Two minutes of time bank left and a fold from Thu. And a hashtag fun fact from QB for Trolls. Ace Queen is called the Waffle Hand in Norway. You go all in with it, you lose, and you buy a waffle in the kiosk. <laughs> mm, waffles. Nice little top pair here for Plant Trap and a Diamond. Queen of Spades on the turn gives some life to Potato, no longer just two outs. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Blue Winters, who says, James and Joe need to have a podcast that they don't already have one. We do. It's been going for we seven We do years. have one. There's nearly 250 episodes. Come on. Episode number 250 released this coming Friday. Correct. Oh, gets paid. Nice one, Potato. Nikolai's just figured out that the players can't cheat by watching the stream. I'm glad you thought of that, but luckily, you know, someone else did a long time ago. We didn't even have to get it wrong once. There was actually, before it even happened, someone was like, you know, we should maybe make it so that people can't cheat. It was crazy. Even like before, it was probably the first thing anyone thought about. But I'm glad you're on it, Nikolai. Actually, it was almost the reverse of that, Joe. 
the first thing we had to think about is how do you do cards up coverage of online poker with software that is fundamentally coded to not allow hands to be displayed by to anyone whilst they're being played and how do you do that you have to recreate them so you have to wait for the hand to conclude in which case a hand history is auto generated you need that hand history to be held on a server delayed for 30 minutes and then that hand history exported to be used to create a replay of that hand as if it were being played in real time in in almost effectually the hand doesn't exist until it's over it is a fact that whilst a hand is in progress obviously the players in that hand can see their own hole cards but nobody else can and there is literally no way that anyone can access that data and look at the hands. It's only once the pot is pushed that the hand history is generated and anyone, even senior management of PokerStars, can then look at whole card information. Fun flop for Asaf. It's an unfortunate flop. Hitting that queen. Very likely to be good in this situation. Well. Chips are starting to get a bit more evenly distributed. And this pot looks like it's going to be going in the direction of Asaf Me. What do you think about Hakers and, back and backtracing, James? I mean, Hakers are always a concern. Not a great run out for Queen Trey. Tony Soprano up to almost 100 mil now. Your band says hakers are the worst. Guys, hakers gonna hake. <laughs> this could be trouble. Shamo does put in another bet. Bye, Sid. You see, Sid, tell him. King Queen makes the call. Hits just one diamond. Big, big pot. Your mother is with not a without a nice. Stack to pot ratio right now. Hmm. I think you got to ditch this. If you shamo. Bye. Two two point five million sick. Getting up there. Yes, we are. Even a stack of a hundred million is not a ton of big blinds. Oh, go away! I'm trying to read this question. Uh, play try James do you love the good sport in the UK called football if so what team do you root for this season in the Poland <laughs> maybe they don't mean pot limit what would what PL mean here Premier League oh they're talking about soccer no yeah football don't care for it thank you for your question 
Now, if you want to talk about American football, he's your boy. Jacks for Rush. Oh, and baby, flops the boat. Play the rush. Plan Trap is going to think that they are live here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You spotted the straight, right? Yeah. This is bad, bad news for Plan Trap. I don't know what the plan was, but this is a trap. I mean, their name is going to live up at this point, just not for the person oh. they usually intend. Oh, my goodness. Is this going to save Plan Trap? It will do. It will do. I mean, okay, great. Cabeza Rush just rivered quads. However, that double paired board means a straight is now looking. What a terrible run out. Pretty for worthless. Cabeza Rush. Oh, God. Please have a queen. Please have a queen. Please have a queen. I don't know if I, if I like this shove. I think if they have a queen, all the money's going in anyway, right? It's a double paired board. Yeah, you just gotta yeah. fold everything else. Okay, so Capesa rush. Pulling ahead of everyone else now, close to 160 million. Second biggest stack is just shy of 100 million. <laughs> the Colossal Tunas are waiting 45 minutes <laughs> to comment that Willy Wonka is more of a candy scientist, which is not wrong. I think it's a valid, a valid comment. Still maintain. You put Tony Soprano in the same room as Willy Wonka. Wonka is dead before he's been able to make some pithy remark. Who's this guy? What's he? What's with the purple coat? <laughs> this could be trouble for Thu. Top pair out kicked. Absolutely. Calls it off. And does not improve. So that is a double up for Chimothers now playing 90 million. Big fan of Chimothers. This is the player who came into day two as chip leader. <clears throat> is yes. third in chips with six remaining. It's not inconceivable that Chamothers could win. And I don't remember the last time we had a player come into day two with the chip lead who would went on to win. MB Mike says, guessing the players aren't interested in checking the numbers yet. It's very rare you see a deal in a bounty tournament. I think we saw one one time with about four players left, but yeah. of all the bounties we've covered, I think it's only been one. It's very rare. Very rare. When I said no weapons would be allowed in this fight, I'm saying you can't. you also can't have any help. So the Oompa Loompas are not allowed in the room. They just have to watch. Not in play. Not in play. No Oompa Loompas. They count as a weapon. Asaf getting a little bit aggro with the two sevens. Has chosen a pretty good time. haircut i'd pay to see paulie from the sopranos versus <laughs> umpa lumpers now that that's content that would be value he, he is an overgrown umpa lumpa really i mean it's almost a fair fight because he's dangerous he's deadly but he's also a bit of a goober so it kind of like
Guy was an interior decorator. Killed 60 Czechoslovakians. <laughs> Two pair for Rush. I'm a big fan of Sopranos memes. The one that they did about uh, where Pauly suggests that the pork store celebrate pride. <laughs> it's like all the uh, all the corporations, they pretend to be gay one month out of the year. I think we should give it a try, Tone. I know that there's so much stuff around now and so many series to watch and so many things on my list that it's hard to go back and watch old TV shows from the beginning. But, I mean, I've done it with The West Wing several times, but I do feel I need to do that with The Sopranos. I watched it when it was originally on. So, season by season. So, that means I haven't seen season one since 1999. So, I really oh, wow. feel that I do need to revisit it and watch it from the start because I do think it's a great series. Wow, Rush gets a fold from 8-9 with a pretty bad hand. Was the best hand, but... Definitely happy to win that pre-flop. Both players without a pair. Plan trap with a nice hand of semi-bluff. Favorite TV show I'll go back and watch every now and then is Babylon 5. Get the bad hammer out now. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that's just... That's just... What the hell? That's just... Well, well, I mean... I, I, I have no words. It's like saying your favorite band is Three Doors Down. <laughs> like... Nobody... <laughs> nobody can... What? Talking of science fiction, I found myself the other night doing the classic, go, kind of going through the channels that you don't normally watch. Like, yeah. you know, all of the various spin-off Channel 4s, all the various spin-off channels. And I came across a sci-fi movie from either last year or the year before called Battle Star Wars. Ooh. Where, and I have to... <laughs> oh, so it's Battlestar Wars. Yeah, it's the only way they could get away with that. But it's written as three words. It's written as battle, star, wars. Oh, it is? Wars. It is, it is. All right, we got a big pot shaping up here. Four ways to the flop, which is ten high potato at top pair. <laughs> we'll read you the description after this, Joe. Babylon 5 definitely holds up. I'm with that guy. How can a thing that never worked in the first place hold up? <laughs> Just kidding. I never saw it. There's plenty of people that like it. It's probably got its, got its qualities. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to talk more about Battle Star Wars. Oh, top pair gets folded through. through okay, look Joe. At you. Here is the synopsis from the IMDb page. Okay. When the leader of the evil coalition threatens to destroy a rebel planet for its resources, his daughter will have no choice but to join the rebel side and fight for what is right. It has a 1.8 out of 10 rating on IMDb. And my favorite, favorite thing is the trivia section. Okay. There, is, there is just one, one piece of trivia about this movie. This film is a ripoff of a famous film series called Star Wars. <laughs> That's trivia. It doesn't even clock in at an hour and 30. <laughs> I watched probably like seven minutes of it, and I'm like, low budget awfulness. There's a guy that looks like Chewbacca. I will admit that there's some attractive people in this movie. Not that kind of movie, Joe. No. But your mother is taking that one down. So 
the shortest stack right now is Potato Potato, who's got 41.6 million. Blinds will be going up in three minutes. Pocket jacks for plan trap. Ooh, living up to the name. And is gonna get smacked here. Play the rush. Nice try. And Plant Trap is still betting. It's going to have like a... Not a great ratio here, stack to pot. And now gets led into on the river. Calls it off with Jax. Wow. And that means Plan Trap is now at the bottom end of the leaderboard and will be playing a sub-10 big blind stack in around two minutes' time when we go to the 1.53 million blind level. Oh no, sorry, not a walk, under the gun race. Gets it done. Asaf, me, queen seven, suited, domination. Win. Don't make an ass af me, <laughs> 403. Pocket tens against the Grafton. And tens better than a nine to one favorite. Wow. Zach on YouTube asking about the boys on Amazon. That's what everyone Twitch is talking about right now. Go over to Twitch. They're talking about the boys. Everyone's talking about the boys. I still haven't seen the first season. It's a slog, man. I, I was not you super see, into it. I think that's the reason why I haven't watched it, because I think when you've mentioned it before, you've never been that hot on it, and there's so yeah. many things to watch. A lot of people rave about it like it's the best thing on TV. It's kind of the same reason they rave about uh, Peacemaker. It's got some, like, funny violence in it, but that, like, isn't enough for me. I need I need the story to move a little faster. I just started season two. It's okay. Uh, it's not bad. It's just not. It's just not quite compelling enough for me. Ace nine versus King five. Good re-raise out of the big blind. Giving pretty good odds to a lot of hands here with Ace nine though. Mm. So good timing for re-raise. I'm not sure about this amount. Are you three betting to fold? Uh, maybe. Because now it's either fold or call. And More than two hundred million two for Cabeza Rush. Hundred and seven million chips and back in action here with queen five of diamonds
two. All in. I'll tell you a sitcom kind of in the faint. I know you liked um, Superstore, James. Yeah. My girlfriend and I have been working our way through Modern Family. And I I think that the, the male, the dad character in that show is right up there with, like, Steve Carell from The Office, Homer Simpson, like, the best leading men on sitcoms. It's That show is so funny. Plan Trap all in for not very much. And Cabeza Rush, playing Ooh. the rush, makes the call. Oh, and good. does not improve. <laughs> so Ace High holds, and Plan Trap doubles up to 50 mil. Pocket sevens for what your mother's opens to six million. Ace King in the small blind for As Af Me. Three bets to 24. Now, we've got a couple of short Ooh. stacks here, but we get this huge flip for 184 million. And sevens hold. <laughs> oh, man. And Big bounty, too. ICM, Schmeicm, Ass Af Me out in sixth place for 13.5k plus 6k in bounties. Chamothers is your new chip leader. That was unexpected. Yeah, for all intents, that maybe shouldn't have happened, but your mother's is going to be pretty stoked. Absolutely. Your mother's is going to be fired up now. And your mother's has already won eight and a half grand in bounties with more to come, potentially. Five players remaining in this week's Sunday Million. Ace nine all in for Thu. And I guess for both Thu and Potato, it's happy days because they laddered courtesy of that yeah. huge flip, which just saw Asaf Me eliminated in sixth place, leaving us with five players as we go to the break. Five minutes and then the action will resume at the final table of the Sunday Million. Chimothers started the day in the number one position, has reclaimed the chip lead, has 188 million. Potato is the short stack right now with 35 million and the blinds are 1.53 so around 11 big blinds and more action on the way as we play down to a winner tonight and welcome griffin benja back to the poker stars arena uh yes griffin you are indeed a little bit fuzzy what if am i done? a little bit fuzzy i don't what know i've come done? back and <laughs> okay i'm gonna refresh my thing i'll see you guys in a minute he's always fuzzy <laughs> i think it's really just one of these moves yeah, just, 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 there you go, there you go, do, 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 do that, do that, keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Look at this, this is live tech support. <laughs> now what do I do? Uh, well, try, try taking your hand away now. Yeah. Try, try leaning in, try leaning towards the camera with your big oh, face. Oh yeah, lean in with your whole face. Lean in with your Close big it. face, big face, there we go, there we go. Close now, now, now pull out and see if it tracks. Uh, yeah, it's doing it. Peter, you're doing it. No. I mean, it's better than it was. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just. You want me to refresh or not? You want me to stick around? Let's let's stick with let's it. Have the, hope... Let's have the chat vote. <laughs> no. By the way, by the way, rule number one: turn off autofocus. You've been doing this long enough now to know, Griffin. Anyway, um, when are you heading to Vegas, Griffin? Have you made your plans? Um, no, I haven't made my plans yet. Um, I'm not, I, yeah, I, 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 same thing happened to me in, 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 was it November that they did it? Yeah. 
when I wasn't that motivated, but I told myself I was going to go, and then I still wasn't motivated, and then I wasn't sure I was going to go, and then a couple days before. He's not very like, oh. focused, James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not sure yet. I'm. I'm not a hundred percent anymore. I'd say. Oh but wow! So that, that that, there's a chance that you don't end up playing the main event this year. Is that what you're saying? <sighs> I don't know. I, I have. I, I have so much travel plans in the next time after that i'm just not sure to be honest uh what about you joe are you, you're, you're, are you back in vegas this summer at all i'm going to vegas yeah i'm i don't think i'm gonna play any poker but i've got a week at the brad garrett comedy club in mgm right before the main event starts so i'm hosting seven nights in a row brad's gonna be headlining uh the final two nights july 2nd and 3rd so i'll be in vegas for that i'm probably mostly gonna stay out of the uh, the tournaments, uh, I just don't want to get COVID again. People are, are getting it that had it more recently than I have. So I'm just going to try to go keep my head down, do my job. Of course, comedy clubs are still indoors. There's still a lot of laughing, spitting, whatever. But I'm not going to take any uh, additional risk in that respect. And then I've got I booked like a couple little gigs like in Wisconsin and uh, Illinois through a friend of mine. So I'm going to do like a oh, Colorado, a little kind of Midwest tour this summer for the nice. middle weeks of July. And I think um, I'm not sure what our Sunday million schedule is yet, but if we have to do it, I'll pop back to the arena and then head back out to do some do some more gigs. Yeah, I, that's worth highlighting, actually. Thank you for reminding me. So, I mean, I'm away for the next two weeks that you've got the next two weeks off as well, Joe. So you are going to get a July 4th break, which I'm sure you'll be very grateful for. So for the next yes. two Mondays, you still get a Sunday Million stream, don't worry, but Nick Walsh is going to be in control of proceedings for the next two weeks. So Nick will be here on Monday nights. I think Felix is going to be joining him for at least one of those streams. Not sure if he can do both of them, but always very impressed with the analysis that Felix brings uh, when we're covering a PKO. And then we will be back Monday the 11th of July, and I think we're going to continue... Uh, right until we get to the end of the month. I know that then, Joe, there's a question mark about early August. I think you might not be around then. So I've got kind of Nick on standby to fill your boots, as it were. Cool. Yeah, we got to have a little schedule meeting, which I think we have coming up this week just to work out what's all going on the rest of the summer. But yeah, yeah. Um, plenty of poker for people to watch still. Uh, again, don't forget, even though we're taking a short break on the podcast, we still have episodes coming out. One's coming out this week and another one will come out a few weeks from now Correct. Uh, at some point in July. So, uh, and of course, Mondays are happening regardless of who's sitting in the chairs. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, plays restarting at the final table. So Joe, you take 30. See you at the top of the hour. Griffin, let's get to it, shall we? Let's. As we see five players competing for that first place in this Sunday million, which will be 54 and a half grand and the final all important bounty. Not a <clears throat> ton of um, sort of maneuverability here for Thu with this stack. Mm. Um, but is a hand you you know you want to be opening at the cutoff there, try to get some folds. But now with this equity for yeah that's the trouble spot right there for Chomadas. You know you hit that pair, and you can see the stack to pot ratio. So Thu just working with just over a pot sized. Oh, ho, 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 ho. King on the river, Larry Greenstein. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> oh. That's a nice pot to take for Thu. So Capesa Rush has reclaimed the chip lead, although it's pretty close between them and Chim Others. Yeah, but, uh, you know, fr from what I saw tuning in for you know, the last 15 minutes before yeah. I came back on here, just uh, some really good awareness of their image and what certain players might be doing. That King-5 suited yeah. shove was a very, very advanced play. You know, you're facing a 3-bet that is effectively putting in, you know, over 30% of their stack, put in 18,000 of about 40 
nine total. And recognizing that this just might be something like what it was, which was the ace nine off and shoving with the king five. Very, very impressive final table stuff and playing for a hundred grand here. This could be very interesting. Three very playable hands. Facing this 3x from Chamada, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see, saw a straight fold from Batato here. But if you think you have some fold equity, you might still just shove it in. I think I would prefer to fold. And I wonder if Batato does shove, whether Plan Trap will reshove, or if Chamada's will even call. So a lot of different uh, ways this can go. Yeah. That is the fold, and there is the shove. The Ace quick jack. call from Chamothers. Versus Ace-10, oh. a domination rotation with the 10 on the flop. A 10 on the river for good measure. And Plan Trap is KO'd. Chamothers moves over 200 million. So Plan Trap from Armenia cashing out for just shy of 20k in prize money. 3.7k in bounties. Chamothers is now worth more than 5k. And again, I would highlight that Potato Potato has now laddered multiple spots and is now locked up at least 28 grand. I do love a ladder. Trouble for, I do yeah, love a ladder. This could be a little trouble for Rush here. Um, you know, this open is from a stack of only 15 big blinds, so you want to comfortably kind of three bet to get in the sevens, hope to get some folds pre flop more often. And then when you do get it in, you're often flipping, but not in this case. It's a bit of a cooler. This Bad start. <laughs> is a double up for Potato Potato, and that's 84 million. So that changes the dynamic. Now we have no short stacks. No one in the danger zone. None of them. Danger zone! No, no, no. No one's in the danger oh. zone, so there's no need. No need. That was a trick. You said, you, it was a, you said it was, danger zone again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, but you only echo it if someone is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Wait, you only echo what? You only say it. You only sing it if someone sing is legitimately. What? <laughs> Griffin. Sorry. So Shadow Clan seventy, I won't go into great detail about this because uh, it's one of those things that probably in about six to nine years, James will eventually lose his mind explaining it. But effectively, the prize breakdown is correct. Those amounts you see is correct. The reason they are so similar is because the person that wins the tournament will get a massive bounty amount. They get their own bounty. They get the bounty they win. Yeah. It's a prize amount that doubles your, you know, it can make, it can significantly increase your, the amount you've won uh, that accurately represents what would normally be a first to second uh, difference. And worth highlighting that when they get heads up, when we know who the final two are, then we will be able to calculate very easily what that difference in prize money will be. <laughs> very easily. I mean, hasn't always been easy. I'll tell you that. We now know the formula. It's actually very simple. <coughs> you basically take the two amounts advertised on screen, multiply by them by two, and add them together. So that, that yeah. total amount will be the final head prize. Just that will be the final simple, penalty. Simple, deep algebra calculation. A simple addition followed by... Algebraic? Multiplication. Algebraic. The Gretzky's. Pocket nines. King Jack flat from Thu. Thooby dooby doo. What you gonna Thu? Bit of misfortune here for Potato, but kind of need to play it as a bet here to protect against the over cards that aren't a king. Hoping to fold out some hands, get some flush drives. Sometimes you're going to call, but it's, yeah, that's not a great card because it makes it less likely that your opponent has a king and m more likely they have a flush draw or something like pocket eights, maybe something like ace seven suited. But the question is, do you want to get into check call mode or do you want to sort of make a blockery 
setting the amount kind of bet. Now you got to play the guessing game. Pretty nice bet sizing here from Thu. Not so much that you're going to scare off a hand like nines, but one that could be credibly seen as, you know, a bit bluffy, almost half pot. Come on. Potato just earned those chips. Potato just got the double up. Doesn't want to give too many of them back or gift them to Thu over here. <laughs> Azimax said, anyone acknowledged yet that this player is probably meant to be Thug? <laughs> I prefer Thu Nine. Yeah, I guess Thug was taken and Thu Six was taken, so I had to flip the the six. Pretty annoying bet to be facing here because you're not even though it's such a good price, James. Your opponent doesn't really have any bluffs here. This looks a lot like what it is, a king. I mean, and you call 15k off here, you're quite short. 15 million. And absolutely, it's going to put <laughs> yes. Potato back where they were, back around the 10 big blind mark having just got that double up. Maybe they can find a fold. And hold on to 50 million here. I like Bagpuss's theory. Maybe the player was born on Thursday the 9th. Yeah. Thursday the 9th. That's what we're going to call this player from now. Not Thug. Thursday the 9th. Or a Thursday in September. This part of the world, you do the day first. Oh, there goes Stapes with his burner account. Stapes fan 310. Makes the call. Oof. Yeah, and you can see how quickly the fortunes can change when you just lose one pot when you're playing. Absolutely. Relatively shallow. Well, the good news for you, Griffin, is mm. that Potato Potato is now back in the danger zone. Danger! That sounded like you were Too in much? pain. That sounded like someone was inserting something somewhere they shouldn't. Too much? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'll take it out after the stream. <laughs> uh, Twitch is loving it. Nines still good. But Ace Jack, a real opportunity to, if not win this hand here, perhaps improve. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow, folks. Pretty sure Griffin just woke up my dead grandmother's ashes with that. <laughs> So I'm now getting requests on the kind of danger zones I can do. I want to make it clear that James has made it very clear that uh, I really I, I risk my my job security if I danger zone when it is not appropriate to danger zone. Correct. Someone has to be in the danger zone. Not only that, but I can't lead him into it. Like, oh, look at the guys in danger zone. Shouldn't you danger zone me? Throw the alley oop. No. Well, let's see the result of this James, flip. Yeah. Well, this is gonna put. Potato back in contention, Griffin. Ace on the flop. And once again, we are in a situation where there are no players in the danger zone. Oh, okay. No, I can't. There we go, see? I'm learning. Tell you what, Joey Pants 2. I will do the next one like a question if it comes up. It will. Eventually, someone will get short stack. Don't worry, Griffin. Your time will come. Okay. 
protein king. But in the meantime, us. please like and subscribe to. Uh... <laughs> Are you playing in any poker events this summer? I have nothing planned. I'm going on holiday at the end of this week, but it will be not poker related. King Jack on the button. Raise and take it. Ooh, cowboys. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what this the relative evenness of these stacks, Griffin, is going to mean. I don't know whether that's going to result in quite cagey play and no one really taking many risks. Which is not a criticism, by the way. I'm not saying they need to be getting it in with any two, but just feel that options are going to be limited now. Um, EM Taylor one asks James, how short is considered danger zone? Less than 10 or less than 20? I think 15 and fewer is kind of, we normally say you're edging towards it when you're 20 to 15. And then once you drop below the 15 big blind mark, we normally say that's when you're in. AI collector is home games with wild cards destroying the game of poker. No. Thank you for your question. Well, if it is destroying the game of poker, it hasn't been doing a very good job because I haven't even heard of that. Well, every home game I played in, that's not strictly true. A lot of the home games I played in in the 1990s played with wild cards. And poker's still going, so I think we're okay. Back in my day... <laughs> At the backroom casinos. Really weird variation called the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I can't even remember the rules of it. Oh, nice. Did you ever watch the good, the bad, and the weird? No. What's that? It is a Korean spin on, um, I think Korean spin on good, bad, and ugly, but it's right. done by like really. Like a high high budget, like it's considered a good a good movie. It's there. It's like them doing a western. It's kind okay. of an homage to the good, the bad, and, and the ugly. This is straight, by the way. It is, and I think he's gonna send Thu straight to hell. Well, Thu has decided to bet seventeen and a half million on the river, and I think we will now see a race. Othu, Othu, you're about to get raised. Othu, Othu, what are you to do? You only have to pair, we're hoping for a call. Othu, Othu, what are to do? I mean, I don't see how Thu can call this and that huge part goes to Cabeza Rush by the way half of the remaining players at this final table are from Brazil both Cabeza Rush and Potato repping Brazil Thu9 playing from Sweden Chamothers is from the UK Okay, so I think the plot of the good, the bad, the weird is a bit different than the good, bad, the <laughs> Now that I'm reading the plot, but... Do you want to hear the plot? It's pretty... It's pretty Just give me a one-sentence summary. Ooh, luckily this is a very long sentence. In 1930s Manchuria... Manchuria? Manchuria. Manchuria. An encounter on a train triggers an epic crusade for a treasure map, prompting a marathon chase in hot pursuit of the loot. Oh, that's one sentence. I mean... It's not dissimilar to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where they're hunting treasure. Oh, well, there, there you go. I guess I don't know that film well enough. You don't, and you should, because it's brilliant. So, Du Wan is the good. Du Wan is a bounty hunter out to track down Chang Yi, the bad, a charismatic hitman attempting to pinch the map from a military official. 
Notice. However, the ruthless Tao Gat Goo hits, puts a hitch in both their plans when he snaffles the map for himself. This sounds very similar to the premise of The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. See, I've never watched The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, I just assumed Perfect. it didn't have that plot. I'm Perfect. sorry. <sighs> Don't break up with me, James. I can, no, just, I can, I, I, I can watch it. I, we've already established you are a man with a lot of time on your hands, so please add it to your list <laughs> and make a point of okay. watching it as soon as possible. I'll even have even more time if I don't go to the main. One thing I would recommend, though, and it's one of those films that exists in multiple versions, so not to get too bogged down in detail, but the original version of the movie was around three hours long, and it was cut down to like two hours 40 for US release. So a lot of the scenes for the US release weren't dubbed into English by the cast. So when they then restored it, I want to say in like the early 2000s, they got like an old Clint Eastwood, an old Eli Wallach, and a voice actor impersonating Lee Van Cleef to do the dialogue for the deleted scenes that never made it to the US release. And it's really off-putting. And so actually I prefer the theatrical cut, which is slightly shorter, doesn't really miss doesn't doesn't really isn't harmed by missing these scenes and as i said i find it really distracting the fact that suddenly the characters sound like 40 years older okay that's weird so wait they've they they kind of like baked it into the official version now is the longer one kind of thing or you're just saying in general there is a theatrical one there and is a theatrical, there's like an extended one i have the, the blu-ray release i have has both versions on it so it has the original theatrical release and it has what's known as the restored extended cut director's cut whatever but as i said because the movie was not done with it, it was all done post production dialogue so they didn't record any of the dialogue on set because those scenes were cut before they did the dub the actors yeah. never voiced those scenes. So in order to put them back in the English language version, they had to get the looping done years later. And as I said, Clint Eastwood sounded very different then to how he sounded in the mid-1960s. So the one on Prime is 2 hours and 58 minutes. That will be the, uh, restored, the restored version. So if you can which track down the, the original movie. theatrical cut, which is closer to 2 hours 40, I would recommend watching I that. I mean, how do I find that? Theatrical. Whew. Make a rush. Betting into the nuts, James. And the question is, is our friend in the big blind, the potato, mash and boil him, put him in a stew. Is he going to just, is him or her just going to call? Just, just just for the record, really I would good say in this spot. betting into the nuts with a pair of fours is not recommended. Just in case there was any doubt, and I love the fact that Potato just calmly, casually, quickly yeah. checks this yeah. river card and sets the trap one more time. And <coughs> pardon me. There we go. All in calls, doubles yeah. up to 138 million. And Potato, who was the one-time short stack, is now second in chips. Telling you, if there was one person that was going to pull the trigger for what you've learned on this final table, it was Mr. Rush. Been blasting away, had a nice four bet shove earlier, really showed the capability to do make some big plays. And that big play, well, it hit him right back in the face like a rake, like stepping on a rake. One other thing where I'm not a fan of the extended version is they remixed the audio and they remixed it in kind of like 5.1 surround and it just doesn't sound right. So again, I would say if you can, track down the theatrical cut. It's definitely available on, on Blu-ray but I appreciate you're probably going to want to find a version of the movie you don't have to pay for. If you can only see the extended version, Griffin, it's it's you know it's, it's still it's still a very good movie. Ace is for Quebec trying to get back in it not going to work against this hand but boy is that a don't call it all price braggy.
called the three bet. Flops pretty well, but Chamother's size is so big. Jampar123 says, I've never seen a version of the good, the bad, and the ugly where the lips match the words. That's part of the charm. I mean, every single actor in that is just speaking their own language, be that Spanish, Italian, French, and then they sorted it all out in post. The horrific dubbing is part of the charm of those movies. See that should work. Or maybe an opportunity to get weird. Getting weird, your mother? So, Cabeza Rush, one-time chip leader, now the shortest stack, but I guess we're going to see these swings. And to be fair, having said a while ago that with the stacks evening out, it might constrict play, it hasn't. These guys have not been afraid to play big pots. I wonder how this is going to play. With this open, Thu has every reason to continue like this. And we see the fives fold. You know, had Potato folded preflop, we might have seen an all-in confrontation for less than 20 big blinds between Quebec Rush and Thune. Thune. Others makes it 21 million with the best hand. Wow. Uh, not a very good call here. Preflop going to be doing a lot of guessing, as we can see right away. And a very this quick bet. Pot yeah, size. representing barrel from two mothers 40 percent of your of your stack okay so the blinds have just gone to two million four million do you know what griffin i'm calling it cabeza rush one-time chip leader kind of edging into the danger zone danger zone that sounded really really creepy I mean, you sounded less tortured than the last time. Clearly, they've removed whatever they'd inserted before, but <laughs> I kind of preferred the previous version. <laughs> this is an anime, bro. <laughs> That might work here for Thune. You know, Thune really works with, with what they've got. You know what I mean? Doesn't need a, to be born with a silver Thune in his mouth. Just, just makes a big bet and takes it down. I'll be here all night, guys. Till my hockey. Because I'm Canadian. Thune, 26 big blinds. Gonna do a little mini raisy. Not crazy about this. 
but maybe you don't want to just limp. You don't want to limp shove. You probably should have just shoved. And now you've allowed your opponent who had 16 big blinds to uh, to make top air. It's no bueno. Oh, Thun. Yeah. And this... It's going to have to be a fold. And time for us to bring Mr. Stapleton back to the stream. Joe, normally at this time, we would at least have a commentator to play a match of three to three, or even better than that, a three to two ratio. But nope, three to four. Things have slowed down when you consider how fast they started today. Who's... Who's messing it up? I'm going to say it's just the way the cards have been dealt and the way the chips have gone. It's We've had a lot of situations in recent weeks, even months, where one player has really dominated and had a, a monster chip advantage. I mean, okay, Chamothers right now has a 2-1 to one lead, but it's not insurmountable. It can be mounted. It we have the technology. Feels like everyone has a lot of chips, but I guess they don't really. No, we're at uh, we're at two million, four million right now, and in ten minutes we're going to go to two point five, five million. I would say that if you were going to run the numbers game, you'd say that the three million, six million level is probably where it should end, or at least where it mm -hmm. should get heads up. So there isn't that much play left in this. But as we've seen, that sometimes makes matters worse because everyone is then just kind of sitting back, clinging on, willing to bleed down to a few big blinds, just a ladder. I I didn't crank it at all during the break, and I guess well, maybe that was a problem. mistake. That may have been a mistake. Um, well, regardless of whether you've cranked or not, you are going to have to see this through to its conclusion because it's peace out for Jimmy here but bear in mind this is a Hartigan at home production so I ain't going anywhere but I'm going to let you take this bad boy home Joseph alright here we go Griffin Benger Joe Stapleton Uncle Daddy can can I just say yes. Joe okay. that I caught a bit of the conversation you had about Babylon 5 and I just wanted to say I was deeply offended that anyone likes Babylon 5 that much. <laughs> <laughs> I have also never seen it, but I stand by what I said. I can't. It was on at the same time as like Deep Space Nine, right? And they had like the same sort of conceit, like some sort of space station. Mm. So, I don't know. A pair of nines here for Cabeza Rush. A pair of nines are good. Nines are good. They're the best hunt. Seven high folds. Thun. Thun. Oh, Thun can't resist, I'm telling you. Rush jamming over this to open. And I assume if things have slowed down, sixes are not calling. Can we, uh... Chamothers. Can, can we get a quick ban for Omnify for the sexism, please? Thank you. Becca Rush, all in for 20 bigs. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a bannable offense. That's, that's a ban. Button action time. Chamothers. Chamothers has been kind of the, you know, he's been a highlight. Him or, him or her. She's been great. Probably a guy with a name like Chamothers. Tell your children not to walk my way. <laughs> I saw I saw a uh, Danzig in concert one time. I invited this girl I had met at a bar a couple of nights before. And uh, she ended up getting a fist fight with someone at the concert. And I ended up leaving her there 
when she ditched me to go hang out with Danzig on his tour bus. <laughs> That's a great story. Pretty good. Pretty good night for me overall. <laughs> Potato. I mean, the equity of having that story, though, it's just way more valuable than the, you know, the snuggle you didn't get with the, with the girl. Yeah. I think when she punched the guy in the face on the, like, in the mosh pit area, she also dropped her passport. And I spent, like, an hour just walking around the Danzig concert looking for her passport. And then when I found it, that's when she ditched me. <laughs> I found it. It was in Danzig's pants somehow. It turns out it was, a, it was, in, <laughs> it was yeah, crammed in Danzig's yeah, mattress. <laughs> It was on his nightstand. It was in his tour bus. It was weird. It, was just... it fell out of your purse and <laughs> yeah. into his hotel room. It's crazy. It's just like it had a mind of its own. <laughs> your mother's. I'll just call that a semi bluff. No, Bat's bottom parent. It's good. Yeah. Your mother's with nine seven now. This should get through too. Mother's opening king four. Rush defense, 10 8, flop jack, 6 6, king high, good. Four good. Four good. Good for you. Good for you. Rim Frosted asks, how in the world are 1,000 plus people watching such a bad poker table? <laughs> well, better make it 999. Thank you for your comment. You banned. You're saying that now, but when you're on the final table, you're going to be wanting to have people watching. Oh, that's right. You probably won't make it to the final table. I mean, I don't know. You could be really good. You might. Maybe you will. Probably you gotta, not. You gotta work on your um, your smack yeah, talk a little bit. Sorry, I know. You've told me that before. I just I go in with like I, I like want to like get in there, but then I'm like, oh, I don't want to like be too mean and then it all falls apart. King nine on the button. Will it be played as a raise, as a shove? It's just over ten big blinds. No. Ruff, ruff, no dog. Ooh. Wow. All of a sudden, everybody's found the all-in button. It's Potato in the most trouble right now. <clears throat> and in We're four minutes... We're at. Go ahead. Yes. I was going to say, we're at. Oh, wants to know if it's stream lagging or or me. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Your mother's up over 300 million. That's pretty cool. Yurik says Griffin is an ex Counter Strike pro. He knows how to smack talk. I don't know, man. Not really sure what up Swedes and check your privilege are really in the smack talk <laughs> hall of fame. Hey, they're in the meme hall of fame and that's who do you think the you only are? Currency. I am, you know, that's there's the no, only uh, currency in this millennium pal. Your mother, how many memes you get? Joe? <laughs> I got two memes. Your mother's getting re-raised by pocket Kings. You keep my mother out of this. Wow, is that a clickback? Yeah. And luckily, Forge and others flops nada. AI collector asks, Griffin is CS pro? <laughs> collector. Come on. Let's just say 
Okay. Do you know do you know who Michael Jordan is? Basketball player? So he's not in the league anymore. Well, let's just say he uh, used to be a big deal in the uh, in the 90s. That's me and Counter-Strike. Pair of sevens for Rush. <laughs> Pair of aces for Chamothers. Rush checks. Chamothers bets eight million. Does get the call from the pair of sevens. Rivers at 10. Shamother's good. Check, check. Completion from Rush with queen five. Does hit a five. Shamother's misses. Another heart on the turn, the deuce of hearts. Hearts not a factor. Ooh. That's ugly because with this just being checked down, it'll come so out of nowhere. This 8,000 bat, a quick call, and Chaboy Calbecker Rush is down into the danger zone. Danger zone! What do you guys think? Do you prefer Joe's? He's the original, but I'm the remix. I'm really the original. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and again, just, you know, I think improperly using your massive stack here, you need to just be shoving here on these 10 big blinds. Now, Potato probably would have called and would have been a hugely advantageous situation, but. So what do I know? This 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 little min fold thing is going to end up working out, but especially in a bounty. Ooh. Ace, ace, ace. Cabeza rush all in. Wow. Okay. Ace five makes the call. Domination situation. Some ways to chop this. And that is one of those ways. This pot ends at a chop. You know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, a chop pot. pot. Hmm. Let's see. Not great, not great, not great. Unfortunately for me, it was <laughs> perfect. What do you mean? Like you heard it? Like we like heard quite it? literally, it was piping. You were piping through my ears as I was seeing it. So, yeah. which I knew meant it was probably going to be off. Jack nine suited shoves. Is potato going to take this flip with deuces? No, negative. Uh, we might be seeing a flip here though from potato, in Thu. <laughs> what is this? Hilarity in food. We are flipping. Oh, nice. And, and an ace. eight nope. hold. Potato is baked. Out and forth. Loaded and baked. Loaded now with $28,104 plus bounties. Just $2,500 in bounties. $2,600. Calbecca is in that place that we discussed. I know if I say it, you're going to have to say it. Zona da Peligroso. Yeah, Zona <laughs> yeah. uh Oh, this is trouble for Thu. Thu nine. Way ahead. The favorite to double up. Applesauce. No. No crisscross no applesauce. Nines hold. 30 no out of 60 million. Oh, oh no berry. Oh, now. No, you got to fold, Kalbeka, for sure. Wow. You got to let it go. And the blinds are now pretty huge. Huge. 2.5 million, 5 million. The, bl the blinds are definitely having a factor here. Yeah, that seems like enough to get banned. Good job.
Got to be careful out there. Because the thing is, Joe's a loose cannon. He's a wild card. Nobody holds him accountable. He can ban whoever he wants. He's crazy. We try to control him. We can't. So you be careful in what you can spin. only assume that one of my bosses is going to tune in one day and go, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Did you just ban a guy that said, I love poker stars? And you said on the stream, I don't like a stuck up. <laughs> yeah, Pitano, get your next sentence out carefully. This commentary, man. Choose your next words wisely. <laughs> yeah. Thu all in, running into the yeah. buzzsaw, the pocket kings. Oh, this yeah. could be lights out for Thu. Hey, Thu, you're going to hit a four or what? We'll you're going to get a little Barry Greenstein, though. No wheel for Thu, the player with the Godfather avatar eliminated. Gone way too soon. <laughs> out in third place, $40,341, plus $4,300 of bounties. Heads up now. You think you're smarter than me just because you got all this math? Chamothers, 300,000. A lot of chips. Quebeca, playing around 33 blinds. So we uh, have a lot two, of play happening two here. Two to one chip deficit. UK versus Brazil. Chamothers, UK, Brazil, rush. Sweden just eliminated in th third place. <laughs> Uno bug me who asked Joe, if you ban me, is it just for this game or all games? You will lose your chat privileges forever if I ban you. See, I don't know if that's true. I don't know how it works, but I just that that seems it seems severe because sometimes we just ban people ironically. Yep. <laughs> wow. That's what makes it hilarious. Flopping the joint is what we call this for Chamothers. Ooh. We do like to call it the joint when it's the actual nuts, but I mean this is more like a spliff. As I like to call it. Bottom end of the straight. <laughs> Oh, that queen on the turn is messed up, Joe. Because Quebec didn't want anything to do with this pot and then turn top pair. I'm telling you right now, if Chamothers gets greedy, Chamothers is getting paid, huh? Does get paid the full pot amount. Cabeza Rush now down to 70, excuse me, 65 million. 13 big blinds. Oh, you hate to have to raise fold this. Oh, my God. You don't raise fold, fold it. it. You just call it off. A nine or an eight or a, a spade. Mm. Double up for Capesa Rush. Wow. <laughs> just the, if you're just going to raise call, you may as well just shove it and get some fold equity. Mm -hmm. Silly boy. That's right, Yancey Blaylock. Word to Chamothers. Did I ever tell you about the time about uh, how I met your mothers? <laughs> Brush raising two tens. Pair of fives could be a little bit of trouble for mothers. He flopped them dead. Not just Chimen, but the Chimothers and Chichildren, too. <laughs> All right, pool of cleaner. You got to chuckle out of us. <clears throat> uh, you're hired. <laughs> Quebec has got to be feeling good about this spot. Two tens and... A diamond in your back pocket. Fifteen million looks like a lot. Three big blinds. Gets a call out of Chamothers. Doing a good job of getting uh, value. 
Yeah. From a worse hand, check, check on the river. Cabeza Rush up to 200 million just about. Gutter for Quebec. -a. Still hovering around 200 million. Not such a big lead anymore. No. For two mothers. Gap being closed. What a flop here. A pair of tens. Club draw. Oh, yeah. That's the this good one. You know, I don't know. I'm also afraid to bet that much. Yeah. Kings now for Rush. What a rush. Fernando Freitas, who says Cabeza equals Cabeza equals head. Thank you for your comment. We, we are well aware. You're banned. Oh, wait, what? Deal. Turns and pause for a deal discussion. Whoa, what's the deal? Are they going to make it? Are they going to chop the $2.33? Oh, no, it's more than that. $8? What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> I don't think Deal they canceled. realized. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone had checked the deal box and the other person was like, okay, let's, I'll bite. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> what's the big on this action? <laughs> I mean, if they were to make the deal for the $8, that the prize difference would be amazing. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's straight for Rush. And yeah. Rush takes down another one. These two are getting dang close to even Stevens. Yeah. Who flops an up and down draw. Eight, nine, ten. Nope, that is not a straight. But it does give another four outs to Quebec if, uh, you know, they can get a free card, but instead plays it as an overbet. And the weakness in which Shamother has been playing this hand may come back to haunt them. It has to call this, yeah. But if anyone's willing to blast it again, it's Quebec. -a. All right, Stozy Pokes, it says they're playing for 9K or like 18. I don't know if we've gone over this yet. So the way you figure it out is you add the two bounties together and then double it. So they're playing for around 18K in bounties. And Cabeza Rush. Yep. With the little bluff. Real lead now. Not even Stevens. A flippy floppy. You more like an even switchums. Top pair. That'll do it. Crossing the 300 million mark. Pretty impressive comeback being mounted. Speaking of comeback being mounted. <laughs> da -da. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Oh, Kiki. Whoa. 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 Okay, baby. She looks very, very happy, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> she loves me, really. She just doesn't like the camera. Don't embarrass me in front of my friends. You went blurry again after all that. <laughs> How do we do this again? Gut shot for Rush. I do like the ET phone home thing. ET. 
flush draw for Chamothers. Elliot. 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 Use like more of your hand. Like do one of these is better. Elliot. There you go. You got it. You, you got it. Don't don't mess it up. <sighs> Elliot. For once, I actually want to focus on the poker. You've done it to me. <laughs> you've you've made me care I more. I can't control when the cat comes inside. Okay, in the room. What do you mean? What do you mean? Closed doors and what is what is this? <laughs> Jack nine does not connect to this board in any way. Trip eights betting full pot. Nice try. Kelbacca, don't be a hero. Kelbacca. <laughs> I don't know where the L comes from. It's from the the, the fuzzy screen. This Kelbacca what? sausage has just got to perform. I'm telling you, Quebecca wants to be a, a hero. With Jack High. Yeah. You he's... can't call here. You can raise maybe, right? Like bluff raise? No, I'm more thinking about calling. Jack High there. Sort of check down. Beating the beating the stone air. No call in the end. No call here either. Florin Fantastic asks, how much was the buy-in? Well, the buy-in of the $109 Sunday million, as you can clearly see, like right about there. Wait, wait, I know this one. Can okay, I? hold on. I'm gonna one more time. The okay. $109 Sunday million. What is the buy-in? Okay, so I know it used to be two fifteen. Um, and then it was halved one. Oh, I can't do this. All right, we're going to pick this up after the break. Players are on a real break this time, not a fake deal break. The base of Rush with the chip lead now, 279 million, playing Chamothers, who's got 200 million. Five million chips per big blind. Not a whole lot of big blinds in play. And we do expect that things will either wrap up during this level or the next one. Griffin, now's the mm. time where I usually like to talk to you about video games, but you've been paying way too much attention to baseball and hockey, haven't you? It's true. It's very, very, very true. Um, there's not much going on in the wonderful world of video games. I was just in Toronto visiting some family, so I didn't really uh, play any when I was out there. What have you been playing? Um, I, you know, we had a, we had a nice little Quiplash game this weekend. Not exactly a new game, but, uh, what's Quiplash? really is the best. What's that? You don't, you don't play Quiplash? No. Oh my goodness. So Quiplash is part of the Jackbox games. I know those. And if you've ever played, you know, Cards Against Humanity is like kind of fun, except all the cards have things written on them that aren't as funny as the things you could write. Yes. So it's like that only you write your own answers. Oh, that's great. And then it pits your answer versus someone else's answer. And then everyone else in the room votes. And uh, the funniest or best best answer wins. So Oh, that's great. That yeah. sounds so fun. It's really fun. You can have like up to eight or nine people playing or something too. It's very, uh, very, very good time. There was something that came out recently that I was wanted to get a friend to play with me. I saw it in the PlayStation store. It's like some kind of mystery puzzle game i thought it'd be fun to stream it but the name escapes me right now i don't think i'll be able to look it up on my phone all that I'll quickly play with you is there anything coming out tmnt came out there's a new ninja turtles game i did hear there's a new ninja turtles game let's see if the reviews are any good yeah i um oh, i got wow. a little tough does it look good 
Nine out of ten on Steam. That's very high. Four point nine out of five on audience rating. What is it even I, out? Shredder's Revenge. I always feel like I um can't, you can't trust reviews. Like, have you ever seen something in the PlayStation Store with like less than a four point four? In what store? Like in the PlayStation Store, like every game is like four point four or higher. I think the PlayStation Store is different yeah. than like you know actual like Steam and stuff. It's like all and then like, IGN is like a shadow of its former self. Like IGN yeah. is like not that good anymore. Sorry. Oh no, these are yeah these reviews are eighty eight percent on Metacritic. It's very very Metacritic legit. you can trust. Yeah, eighty eight percent is a, is very high. So I assume this is co op. Like we just play this on the computer together. I'd be down to play. Well, that this sounds pretty dope. Do that. I'll be up for that. But isn't it still baseball season? I mean, I'll make an exception for a little Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with you. Crazy Carl letting me know that I am a fan of the Evil Dead franchise, and they just released a video game, but the style of the game is one I don't like very much. It's like that Dead by Dawn style. Dead by Daylight, yeah. Dead by Daylight. Oh, Dead by Dawn is literally the name of Evil Dead 2, actually. Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. Yeah, not my favorite. And then I saw it got really, really horrific reviews, but then IGN gave it an 8 or something. Not hmm. really feeling IGN anymore. What's like the... Oh, this is like a... Oh, this is like TMNT, the arcade game. Yeah. Oh, and there's a new Starship Troopers game came out as well. All right, well, maybe there will be something more interesting to talk about if we actually play some of these. Yeah, I'm down. This looks fun. This I, I used to have a great time with these games. I used to uh, dream at night that I would find a TMNT machine with unfree play. Like, that's the kind of thing I would dream about. Oh, so, yeah, we got to do this. Liberty Fire says it's six-player max play as the Turtles or Casey Jones, Splinter, or April O'Neil. Wow. That sounds awesome. It does sound awesome. You know what else sounds awesome? Figuring out who's going to win this week's Sunday Million. Ooh. Is it going to be uh, Kabeka, Kabeza Rush? Or is it going to be Chamathas? I mean, I would say uh, both momentum and sort of play action in favor of Rush thus far. Rush has been pretty impressive. Yeah, on this heads up match. I really like what I've seen from, we've seen from Rush all final table. Ooh, ace tray of diamonds. Ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Pocket sevens. A tray on the flop, a diamond on the flop. Seven's still good. Could be a big pot based on how the run out goes. That's a juicy card for... It goes yeah. check, check. You know, interestingly, all this, most, a lot of the straight draws have got there with the four, five. The ace, X have gotten there. If your opponent had an eight, yeah. has made trips. Floating the flop with ace high has made an ace. So seven is a tough here. call, but Oof. calls it right away. With the potential flush draws out there and the five six draws. Snapped it. I believe this is the biggest chip lead we've seen thus far. Heads up. Cabeza Rush with a better than two to one chip lead right now. Blinds just went up as well. So we're looking at just over a 20 big blind stack right now for Chamothers. Seven nine on the button for Chamothers. Eight four for Capesa. Griffin, what's your platform? If we were going to play this game, we got to do it on PC. Nope, PC, PS five. Okay, great. PS five, perfect. Great. Up and down draw. And a weird raise here from Chip Mothers. Yeah, a bit weird, but putting a lot of pressure on. Uh, Cabeza getting such a good price here with this open end. It might be kind of forced to at least call. Try to hit that deuce or seven. Somehow nine high is the best hand. Wow. And pops oh, it back all in. 
And that is just a, yeah. Not All right. Hand well, there. Chamother is on fumes and is getting shoved on. Domination Ooh. situation. This could be it if Queen Jack holds. Oh, man. Queen Jack, of course, is going to be the hand that wins it after yeah. all the trash I talked earlier today. Chamothers knocked out KO'd in second place, which means that all of the bounties go to, and the title, go to Cabeza Rush from the country of Brazil. 54,000 in advertised payouts, 26,000 in bounties, which means about $80,000 for first place, $64,000, close enough to $65,000 for second place. UK versus Brazil, Tremother started off with the chip lead for the entire uh, day today. Started off heads up with the chip lead, let it all slip away, unfortunately. A little bit of run bad, a little bit of uh, not getting the right cards, but also uh, impressive performance from Capesa Rush and another tournament another sunday million tournament going to brazil griffin you gonna make your hockey game i am 6 34 i'll leave in about uh 15 minutes uh some time to uh just to, to say hi to the wifey and uh and then head off to play hockey okay great we'll be in touch about playing some tmnt well, maybe i was we'll gonna say i'm gonna pledge right now i'm gonna go download it while i'm gone i'm gonna commit okay this. perfect well let's commit to a time to maybe stream it who knows oh cool perfect all right, kids. Well, it's summertime. Let's go out and enjoy the rest of our nights. Get a good night's sleep, whatever it is. Reminder, we do have a new episode of Poker in the Ears coming out this Friday, and it is a good one. We talked to the head of game integrity at Poker Stars. So uh, lots of great, interesting questions. Very nice interview James conducted. But that is it for today's Sunday Million stream, and we will be back next week. Or the stream, I will say, will be back next week for another edition of the Sunday Million until then, for James Hardigan and Griffin Bender, I'm Joe Stapleton. Smell you later. Dang it!